Chester dressed head to tight, head to toe in white uniforms with the black numbers. NFA head to toe in red with white trim. High end over end kick comes down to Caleb Parker right at his goal line, heads up the right sideline, cuts it back to the middle, looking for a block, slips a tackler, makes another one miss, gets to the outside, still on his feet, wrapped up and finally brought down at the 40 yard line. A little slippery move that time, brought down by Jake McLinden, number 43 of the Rams, and he saved maybe another half dozen yards, but a good opening kickoff return by Parker. Yeah, speed and playmakers on both sides of the ball for both teams. Parker saw a little bit of a lane Casey there and the, you know took it back up and NFA sets up their first possession at their own 39 yard line. And a young running back, a freshman, Sean Preston in the backfield with McManaway operating out of the shotgun. Handoff goes straight up the middle, breaks a tackle off a right tackle and down after a nice gain of five is Preston. Good gain on first down for the Wildcats. Yeah, shed it off the initial contact, spun in the hole, got him to the second level. Got a good gain on first down, second down and four. Pomeroy goes out wide right along with Jaheim Spruill in the backfield now. Double dip, handoff kept by McManaway. McManaway gets close to the 50 yard line off right tackle where he's going to be brought down. It's going to bring up third and very short for the Wildcats. Yeah, once again, McManaway getting into the second level, stuck his head down and got a tough, tough two yards. Third and very short. NFA going, hurry up. Handoff straight up the middle to Preston, and that's going to be close. It's going to be all about the mark, but a big forward surge from the offensive line, and the ball's now loose on the turf. The officials are marking it. Is it live or is it played dead? Let's see what they say. They're saying it was down and dead, and it's going to be a first down NFA. That was a big offensive line surge from the big NFA offensive line. Wildcats going here, no huddle. McManaway stands in the shotgun with Preston to his right. McManaway first throw of the game, quick slant, finds his man on the quick slant. Pass caught by Mulkentine, that's his favorite receiver. And Mulkentine has another NFA first down, and they're going no huddle. They do not want this Cheshire team to get the substitute. Yeah, 12 yards on that pitch and catch, and again, Cheshire right now back on their heels a little bit in the first four or five plays of this ball game. Four wide for NFA, Mulkentine and Cam Belton go wide left. McMahon away to throw, other side, out in the flat he goes to Pomeroy, and Pomeroy is stuck and hit hard immediately. I like the tempo of this offense though from NFA Casey, you saw him run the ball in the first three downs, now they're passing. And we're gonna get our first flag as NFA went hurry up, it was Nick Quint out there on the big hit on the uh, previous play for Cheshire. NFA went right up to the ball and they got a little too quick we're going to get a false start penalty against the Wildcats. It gives us a chance to breathe, Sports Doc. Yeah, two for two, Shane McMahon away in this drive, Casey, for 14 yards. And again, the hurry up, no huddle, get to the line, snap the ball, and go. Four wide, two left, two right. McMahon away operates in the shotgun, standing at his own, excuse me, at the Cheshire 45. Straight drop, plenty of time. Sideline pattern is off the fingers of Cam Belton, incomplete. And that's going to bring up a big third down for NFA, third and about 13. A good pass rushing down for the Rams. Yeah, Belton that time came out of the slot position, the tight end spot, as you want to call him. Athletic kid just could not reach out and grab that ball. Third and 13, McManaway stands at the Cheshire 45. Straight drop, not a lot of pressure. Cheshire dropping back in his zone. McManaway goes up, heaves it long down the field. The ball is up and knocked away by Jeffrey at the goal line. Michael Jeffrey with a great play, knocking it away from Mulkentine on the goal line. Yeah, that time McManaway, Casey, stepped up in the pocket, eluded the rush, and actually had a lot of green grass in front of him. I expected the young man to tuck it, run, and possibly to pick up the first down. But a nice initial possession here by the Wildcats offense. The penalty really hurt them on that possession. Yeah, it did, and you're right. Cheshire dropped back. They only rushed three. They dropped back into a zone, yeah. but he would have had to go 20 yards to get a first down because of how far back he was. I think he wanted to take a shot at his best receiver, Mulkentine, but Jeffrey on the other side, they're more its most dynamic guy as well. Parker's kick spins out of bounds. The officials will mark it. They're walking up the sideline now. Let's see where the Rams will take their first possession. It's going to be not a good result for the punt at the 22 yard line. So the Rams will have it at their own 22, 9.57 remaining here in the first period with their first possession. 
And I think NFA showed you right out of the gate that they're not going to be intimidated, and they are going to try and dictate the pace of the game on the offensive end. They picked up an initial first down, drive stalled, uh, Cheshire's football. 6'4", 230, 6'7", 315. That's the two tackles for this Rams offense. Jack Raba has his man Elijah Alston in the backfield, twins right. Hands off straight up the middle to Alston and nothing there. Nice job by the center of the NFA defense. Alston's going to be stopped for no gain, maybe even a loss of a yard. Nice uh, job up front by the big people from NFA, trying to anchor down things on that line of scrimmage, making things tough to run for Alston. Rams are going to go with their own version of the no huddle. Reba goes to points he wants. Alston to his right, trips right. Straight drop, now Reba rolls. Looks still on a sideline pattern, finds Jeffrey. Jeffrey sprints up the sideline, has a first down. They're going to say he stepped out of bounds just shy of the first down. Good spot for the Wildcats, but it's going to be third and short. And you can see right there, Reba with a very, very accurate arm, and Jeffrey very slippery. Tough to make that throw, Casey, on the roll in a position where his only his receiver can make a play on it and turn up field and get an extra 12 yards. Yeah, we see professional quarterbacks who struggle with that kind of a throw. Rolling right, putting the ball with some touch, but also with some zip. Angelone goes out wide right. Now the Rams are going to go from the eye. Alston is the tailback. He gets the handoff, tries to get off left tackle, and does. Has a first down up to the 40-yard line. The first first down of the game for the Cheshire Rams. Yeah, Cheshire can do it all. We asked the coach last night, you know, what is the game plan going in? You're going to run it? You're going to throw it? And he basically said, whatever it takes, we have to adapt to whatever defense NFA is playing. Yeah, I tried to get him to, to open up a little bit, and uh, but he said exactly that. He said, you know, listen, we can, we think we can do it all, and we're going to do whatever NFA dictates with how they come at us. First down, plenty of time. Reba deep down the sideline and just off the fingertips of Eric Angelone, who was running down the sideline with Parker. And incomplete, that's one he definitely would like to have back. Now the arm on the deep ball to the fade pattern, 40 yards downfield. Nice coverage that time by the NFA defensive back, but just out of the hands of the receiver. You know, I like the I like the taking the shot early after the first down by Cheshire. Angelone is 6'2", 200. Jeffrey, 6'2", 185. That is two big wideouts here for the Rams. Good aggressive play call, Casey, on first down. Reba in the shotgun. Twins right. Fakes the hand off. Throws on a slant and throws behind his intended target, Angelone. McLinden was there, faked it to him. That did the nice job of freezing the NFA linebackers. And Angelone was open, but that's a tough throw as well. Yeah, just a little behind his receiver. And Rabe is a big kid back there, quarterback. He could see over the offensive line. He could create his own passing lanes. He surveys the field very well. Third and 10, ball at the 39-yard line. 8.51 remaining in the first, no score. Cheshire with the football. Reba from the shotgun, fakes the handoff, looks for a little bubble screen, out in the flat it goes, and well defended early on the ball were the Wildcats. He had Tommy Winuck on a little bubble screen, but the Wildcats converged, and they will force a punt from Cheshire. Yeah, nobody at home that time for Tommy Winuck as he was stuffed after a short gain of maybe three yards, Casey. It's going to bring up fourth down and seven. Caleb Parker is going to go back deep for the Wildcats. He'll stand at his own 20-yard line, awaiting uh, the punt from Cheshire. Fumbled snap, ball's on the turf. The punter's gonna get the punt off. It's a low line drive, and it's gonna go out of bounds inside the 40-yard line, but what a great job by the punter, Ethan Bronson. He fumbled the, the snap, but he managed yeah. to avoid, elude the rush and sort of get a kickoff. Yeah, Cheshire really caught a break there. A heads up play by the punter, Casey, and actually flipped field position off of a busted play. Yeah, it could have been first and 10 NFA at the Cheshire 35 yard line. Instead, they're back to their own 38 yard line. So first and 10 NFA at their own 38. McManaway in the shotgun has, and we're gonna have flags on the play right away. We'll see what the officials signal. There's your guy, Joe Sal in the middle. He's calling another false start here against NFA. Too quick to the ball. They're trying to go very up-tempo. you got to get set, which they didn't do there. Going to back him up. First and 15. Ball moves back to the 33 now. Four receivers set in the backfield is Hamlin now. McManaway has time. Now he's pressured. Rolls out. 
Going to keep it himself. Cuts inside. Makes one tackler miss. Gets past the original line of scrimmage up to the 40-yard line. Making something out of nothing on first down is Shane McManaway. I like the decision that time by McManaway. Tuck it. Put your head down. Get seven yards. Get five back on the penalty. And two. Second down and eight. Second down and nine. Second down and nine. McManaway tosses it out to Hamlin. Hamlin cuts off right tackle. Has some speed. Gets to the outside. And nice tackle out on the edge by Jeffrey prevents what could have been a bigger gain. Hamlin's only going to get two, and it's going to bring up third and five. Yeah, the cutback by Hamlin. You saw the speed, and then you saw the speed of the linebacking core from Cheshire, the pursuit to the ball, Casey, third and five. Jeffrey, the big, strong safety out there, came up and run protection. McManaway going to throw, pressured. Now he has time. He steps up. He's rolling. Beats a linebacker to the edge. McManaway has a first down. Crosses the 40. Gets a great block from Pomeroy. Down the sideline. Cuts inside the 20. Cuts another defender. Shane McManaway reaching for the end zone and down at the goal line. But a Herculean effort from the senior quarterback puts the Wildcats on the door. 58 yards on the quarterback keeper by Shane McManaway. That time you saw the poise of the senior leader, Casey. Tuck it. Run it. Catch a block. First and goal. Cats from the one-yard line. They're moving the ball back, setting it down at the three. McManaway is going to go under center. Now they're backing him off, and we're going to get the play called in from the sideline. So they're going to take their time here to now get things set up. What a start here for the Cats. Hamlin's going to be the lone setback. They're going to put Belton in the backfield as a blocker. Hamlin gets the handoff straight up the middle, reaching for the end zone, waiting for the official signal. And not quite there. Down on the goal line is Michael Hamlin's second and goal for the Wildcats. Yeah, and this, this last yard, yard and a half for the Cats will not be easy pickings as they look for six. Casey Cheshire's got all their big boys in, buttoned down up front. Twins right, single wide out to the left is Mulkentine. Hamlin will be the lone setback. McManaway operates from the shotgun. Hamlin is directly behind him. McManaway fakes, rolls right, looking for a receiver. Pressured, eludes, steps up, throws on the slant, and it's caught for the touchdown! Touchdown, Wildcats, Jaheim Sproul on an improvisation from McManaway. Ah, uh, Shane McManaway, I can use my feet and I can use my arm. Bought himself some time on the, uh, on the bootleg Casey, all alone out there, shrugged off a tackle, got six. What a play. I had a chance to talk with Coach Don Drust the other night, and he was very clear. He was concerned about the playmaking ability of Shea McManaway. He said that young man can throw the football, but he was also very concerned about his ability to run with the football, and he said he makes great decisions, and we saw all of that. Cheshire was right to worry about Shea McManaway. Yeah, all that on one drive. The extra point is up, and it's good. KC 7-0. What a luxury to have a senior quarterback like Shane McManaway. Like you said, decision making, no one to tuck it, no one to run it, and buying himself some time and not panicking, and his receiver coming back to his quarterback, great play. We were here a couple of years ago when he was a sophomore. Yeah. And you remember the game where they, had, they lost multiple quarterbacks, and they ended up going with uh, Briggs and McManaway as two sophomores. Sure. Just got him out there to get him experience. Briggs has since moved on to tight end. And McManaway last year really came into his own. But on that drive, you saw him make an incredibly athletic play with his feet, then make a great decision, and then with his feet by time, and that's an accurate throw under pressure. That's, a, that's just a series of attributes McManaway is shining with now. And, and he's done it the entire length of the field. He did it in third and short. Uh, he did it in goal line situations. So just, you know, where this young man is and how much he's grown. Casey, it doesn't matter where he is in the field. He's going to make a play. Yeah, and he has made one. And so far, these two teams look very well balanced. And I think Cheshire probably a little bit surprised with the playmaking ability of McManaway. Cheshire, on the other side of things, yeah, feels I, like they had some open guys. Rayba I, just needs to put him on the mark. Yeah, yeah, I think surprised by the speed of Shane McManaway as well. Absolutely. Little squib kick by Parker. Bounces loose on the turf, and it was a fall on it. Heads up play by McAlinden that time. Fell on the kick as that ball was spinning and saved what could have been a disastrous kickoff there for Cheshire, so heads up play. Now we're going to see the importance of that early score, getting on the board first 
for the Wildcats offense, how much that carries over now that their defense, they played a tremendous first possession on D. Let's see if they can carry that momentum with them. So momentum is a fickle thing, you know. You set to one of your favorite <laughs> lines, and but it's proven true over and over again. Reba in the shotgun. Twins right, single setback. Alongside of him is a McAlinden. McAlinden gets the handoff around the end, looking to cut it back in a nice open field tackle out there by Parker. And we're going to get a flag on the play. Looks like you're going to get a hold against Cheshire. And that is not a good way to start on first down. Great open field tackle by Caleb Parker that time, uh, which would have prevented much of a gain anyway, but now they're going to be backed up. Yeah, Caleb Parker, one of those kids that comes from a safety position, from the other side of the field, flies all the way across and makes the tackle. You know, it's very similar. These two teams are very similar to each other because it's Michael Jeffrey on the other side of yep. things that does the exact same thing that Parker does. He's a wide out, but on defense, he's their play caller. He operates from that strong safety position, sees the field, comes up in run support. So when you have two teams that are evenly matched, it comes down to either execution or improv, as in Shane McManaway. And we're going to find out about who has the execution and who has the ability, as you said, Sports Doctor, to improvise so far Wildcats have done a nice job, 7-0. Here we go, first and 20, 5.39 remaining in the first period, 7-0 NFA over the visiting Cheshire Rams. Boy, this does have a big-time feel to it, huh? doesn't it, in the stadium tonight? It, the Time place out. is packed, timeout NFA. But Casey, I mean, look around this beautiful campus of NFA. It's just, it's one of the most prettiest campuses in, you know, in, in Connecticut. But both sides of the bleachers packed. Cheshire brought a lot of fans with them here tonight. And this is a great, great place to see a ball game. As always, game day is sponsored by Family <laughs> First Life. Family First Life is a team environment, hiring many current and former athletes because they understand competitiveness and teamwork. If you are looking for part-time or full-time work, apply online at our friends down there, familyfirstlife.com. See John Iavino walking in front of us, uh, one of the Mount Rushmore guys here at the Academy. I think we should say Jefferson. Is he Jefferson or Washington? Yeah, he's one of them, yeah. I mean, I don't even know who's on Mount Rushmore. You don't Rushmore. know who's on Mount Rushmore. Know, yeah. I mean, if I asked you who the Mount Rushmore of the Cleveland Browns was, though, you could probably answer that. But not the actual one in South Dakota. That would Where is it? You. South Dakota. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. Uh, football season, Casey. Uh, We're talking Mount Rushmore here. But uh, John Iavino down there. We'll try to get him at halftime. What do you think? That's a great guess. That's a good guess. Yeah, you talk a little baseball. Cleveland Indians winning streak. The Windians? Yeah. Here we go. First and 20. Cheshire. Reba operates out of the shotgun, has Alston to his left. Snap is good, fakes the handoff to Alston. Quick hitter over the middle to Jeffrey. We'll get them back almost to the original line of scrimmage. Michael Jeffrey, the go-to guy for Jack Reba. Yeah, second time we've seen that play. The first time the pass was a little bit behind Jeffrey. You know, he slips out of this tight end position in the slot. A little, uh, fake handoff, and he comes uncovered. Nice play there by Cheshire. Gets himself 10 yards. You can see how he had 10 targets and 10 catches last yeah. year. Uh, last week, rather. He is open all the time. Reba, straight drop, going to throw again on a little seam route. Had his man, Angelone, and he has not been able to connect with Angelone yet. And he had the inside seam that time. Had his man beaten, did Angelone. That could have been six right there for Cheshire if you would have caught that in stride. Inside position, quick slant. Ball just a little out in front of his receiver. Yeah, Nazea Paul, the junior defensive back, had outside position. Angelone took the inside seam, and he did not have safety help. If he had caught that in stride, that would have been a big play. Three Instead, for, yep. third and 12. Three for six for Reba here, early going case. Third and 12, 5 4 remaining in the first period. Reba, empty backfield, five receivers. Drops, looks right, down the sideline, throws, looking for Angelone, and overthrows him at midfield. Well covered out that the time was Angelone. And the coverage that time was from uh, Malik Gibson, who's a big linebacker safety hybrid here at NFA. Had him covered the whole way. Sideline to sideline by Gibson. And that was a that's a big time attempt at a big time throw by Reba. On the sidelines, outside inside shoulder, so only his man can get it. I like the way he looks here so far. He hasn't been able to connect, but Reba can make the throws. The kicker, Bronson, high booming punt takes Parker all the way back to his own 21-yard line. And I got to tell you, we have seen Ethan Bronson kick off and punt better than anybody we have seen in five years. He's Spencer, he's a... Uh, Spencer Hoagland? Spencer Hoagland S. <laughs> but that punt was a, that was a, that was a college-level punt. Right? Alumni Hall is directly across from our, our broadcast position. And Alumni Hall is a pretty big building here at NFA. And the punt was more than building high. 
That was a huge punt. It was a big punt. Got NFA all the way back to the 23-yard line, up 7-0. They'll take possession. Empty backfield, McManaway. McManaway fakes, pump and go. No one's there. Now he throws out in the flat. He has Parker. Parker breaks a tackle. First down, NFA, and Parker ridden out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Another improvisation from Shane McManaway. Yeah, and there you go. Parker Brothers paying, playing games again. You know, Parker knows what to do with the ball, Casey. He's been around his program a few years, and he's one of the playmakers for the Cats. First and 10 ball marked right at the 41-yard line. 4.41 remaining here in period number one. Slow-moving game because both these teams like to air it out. 7-0 NFA with the football over a, I'd say, surprised Cheshire Ram team right now. I would say, yeah, back on their heels quite a bit. But a team of this quality very quickly adapts NFA looking to capitalize on the possession. McManaway over the middle, has Parker again. Gain of about six up to the 45 yard line. And that's the one thing, there's the biggest difference playing that out of conference schedule that NFA has started to play. You get up seven nothing, 14 nothing on some of the ECC teams, it's good night. A team like Cheshire, they're not at it. I mean, they're, they're sitting there, they're in no, you know. No, no, no panic mode, panic. no panic mode. Five for seven, early going in this ball game for Shane McManaway. Second and four, McManaway. This time he hands off to Preston. Preston has a first down for the Wildcats. Crosses the 45-yard line. Nice run on first down by the freshman, Sean Preston. Yeah, Sean Preston there. There you see the speed in the hole, the ability to spin, and then finish the run. Boy, an awful lot being asked of this young man, Casey, and he's handled it just fine in the first uh, eight minutes of this ballgame. First down, NFA. McMahon away going to throw. Little hitch route. It goes. He has his man, Mulkentine. Mulkentine with another Wildcat. First down as he goes inside the numbers to the 30-yard line, and they'll move the chains. Easy pitch and catch that time. Mokotine inside position. Casey, great game. Handoff up the middle goes to Preston, but they're going to blow it dead. NFA sprinting to the ball, and they're going to get an official's timeout. I think they're going to say timeout on the field. Cheshire called a timeout there as NFA had them backpedaling a little bit, getting up to the football very quickly. Yeah, I think this fast-paced offense is starting to wear down Cheshire a little bit. Uh, just from what I see in this ball game so far, Casey, I, I don't know if Cheshire was quite ready for the pace that's being dictated by the Wildcats, and I'm kind of shocked to see it too. Well, I'll tell you, I think that's a very good point, Sports Doctor. I mean, it's not its not anything they haven't seen before, but it might be something they weren't expecting to see here. Right. Uh, you know, that's one of the things when I talked to Coach Trust, he made an excellent point. He said, you know, the reason we can't do any one thing is because of the variety that they face in conference. He says, you yeah. see Shelton run and spread and North Haven run and single wing and, you know, then you go to Xavier running the empty Power set. Power football and in West certain West Haven pieces. running, right, wing tee. Yeah. It's like everyone does something different. So the pace of, say, a Xavier or the pace of a Shelton isn't something new to him, but maybe they weren't prepared for NFA going at that same pace. Uh, and NFA, clearly, as they did to Xavier last week, uh, not afraid to, to just go toe-to-toe -to -toe and push tempo. First and 10 Wildcats from the 31 of Cheshire. McManaway is going to throw. Plenty of time. Now he steps up. Going to keep it himself. And a little shuffle pass goes out into the flat. And we're going to see ball on the ground. Ball loose. And we have to see what the final result of this is. That is an interesting play. Pass was pass caught was pass to Parker. To Mulkentine, they're saying. And then he lost the football, but NFA recovered. So it'll be first and 10 at Wildcats after the change of possession was actually not a change of possession. A dangerous play that time by Shane McManaway. I always figured he was just going to keep it, tuck it, and run it, and pick up the safe three yards. Now they're calling that an incomplete pass. All right, so they're going to call incomplete, which I think makes a lot of sense. I think right. he, he turned, got hit, ball dislodged. So instead, we'll have second down here for the Wildcats. Ball still at the 31-yard line. Hamlin is the lone setback. Trips right. Mulkentine is the lone set left. McManaway going to throw. Pressured. Steps up. And this time they're going to get to him. They kept him in. They're closing the pocket now. Not letting him go to the outside. Nice job by the Cheshire defense that time. Got to McManaway. Yeah, great job by the interior part of the Cheshire defensive line, Casey. Coming off their blocks, like you said, and kind of pinching the middle so she doesn't have room to step up because there's a lot of green in front of him. Yeah. Third and 11. McManaway going to throw. Plenty of time this way. Deep down the sideline, he's got Pomeroy, and it goes through his hands inside the goal line. It would have probably been a touchdown. Kevin Pomeroy, just a little bit too tall for him. That ball was thrown on the line, and I think Pomeroy wants that one yeah. back. Great step up and throw. The patience by Shane McManaway. 
The play was there, Casey, just outside of Pomeroy's fingertips, and it looks like NFA is going to go for it here on fourth and one. Well, they're at the Cheshire 31-yard line. Now Parker's going into the game, which means they may try to punt and pin Cheshire back. They're kind of in no man's land. I think if it was a shorter uh, fourth down, maybe they would, but fourth and 11 is a long first down. But McManaway staying on the field. Parker's now lining up as a receiver, so they're going to go four receivers left. Single receiver right is Spruill. McManaway from the shotgun. Fourth and 11. McManaway, plenty of time. Now comes pressure. Steps up, deep down the sideline, looking for Spruill. And Spruill was face guarded, but the ball was out of bounds. No flag. Cheshire holds. They'll take over. First and 10 from their own 31 yard line. Yeah, gutsy call, Casey, on fourth and 11, like you said. Man going down the right side. McManaway stepped up, just overshot him. Cheshire holds a serve with 240 left to go here in the first quarter, down 7 0. Jaheem Spruill, he caught that first touchdown pass. Had a real opportunity that time. I think they wanted a face guard, but that ball was just thrown in a place where he couldn't catch it. So first and 10, Cheshire from their own 32-yard line. 2.40 remaining here in the first period. 7-0 NFA. Reba from the shotgun. Has McAlinden in the backfield with him. Hands off to McAlinden. McAlinden gets into the open. Second level. Breaks it out the side. Down the sideline. Chased by Parker and pushed out of bounds. Big run from Jake McAlinden to get Cheshire deep into NFA territory. 43 yards I've got him for unofficially on the carry on the outside. So a little bit of power in the hole, a little speed down the sideline, and a good finish that time by Jake McAlinden. 43 for 43 yards, and now Cheshire going hurry up. Little handoff again, McAlinden, this time he goes right, and a great open field tackle by Caleb Parker. Results in no gain as McAlinden was trying to shift his way back inside and Parker went low, cut out the legs. Yeah, Parent sitting right in front of his tour at our broadcast position. Mom and Dad loving that run by their son. Well, I'll tell you, it's great sitting in the Cheshire uh, fan section because you, you don't pronounce anyone's name wrong, <laughs> no. and, and you get a real feel for what the crowd is thinking here on the Cheshire sidelines. Second and nine from the NFA 29-yard line. Reba hands off to Alston. Big hole up the middle, and he's going to be back past the line of scrimmage for a gain of about six. Elijah Alston that time, power running off right tackle, and Cheshire now moving the ball a little more effectively. And you see the size of the biggins up front for the Cheshire Rams, paving the way, good tough inside running, Casey, as we wind down about a minute and a half here, and a very a fast moving first quarter. Drew Zebarth, I'll say it again, 6 7, 3 15. He'll be playing for free somewhere next year in college. Yes, yeah, somewhere next year, they're all over him, but if that's not enough, if you go on the other side, he's the left tackle. You go to the right tackle, and you got Daniel Koval, and he's 6'4", 230. That doesn't get any easier. No, no, some big guys up front. Second timeout of the quarter used by Cheshire. They want to talk things over on a third down and four. From the 23-yard line, you know, Sports Doctor, game day brought to you always by Family First Life. Family First Life can meet all your life insurance needs. Contact them for a free quote at 860-317-1324. That's 860-317-1324. Our boy Sean Mike just celebrated a birthday the other day, and somehow he's younger than both of us. And I don't know how that, I don't know how that is. Yeah, <laughs> the old day. Sean old. Mike, celebrating a birthday. younger than us combined? Combined now. Uh, combined. No, no, no. <laughs> yes. What are we, about 90? We are. We're, we're, uh, 93? We're, we're, we're a little on the other side of 90. <laughs> <laughs> you know, tonight is a big night for the ECC. They're traveling against big time teams tonight. New London on the road up at Massac of Monroe. That's a big challenge for them. Fitch has having uh, Notre Dame of West yep. Haven in. So a few of these now, of course, NFA with Cheshire. It's a big out of conference night tonight for the ECC. I like it. I like it for the league. Third and three. Reba hands off to McAlinden. He's trying to get to the left sideline, but Parker's out there to make a stop all the way back past the original line of scrimmage. Jake McAlinden tried to get to the sideline. He just didn't have the angle, and Parker chased him down. Yeah, it almost turned into a bit of a stretch play out there for Cheshire Casey on third and short yards. He actually lost seven yards on that play. It's going to bring up fourth and eight for Cheshire. We're under a minute remaining here in period number one. Seven nothing. NFA on top, you're listening to Game Day, live on theday.com and on Facebook at Game Day, Connecticut Sports. Fourth and nine, Reba from the shotgun. He's going to throw, straight drop, and whistle down on the play. We're going to get a stoppage. That's going to be a penalty 
against the offense. Well, we're going to go offsides against the Shane against NFA. Oh, uh, we are. You're going to get a jump. Good call, sports doctor. All right. That's a big penalty right there that goes from fourth and eight to fourth and three. Case. That's a, you know, a whole bag of tricks get, uh, in the play calling gets opened up. Fourth and three. And absolutely a much more manageable fourth down play. Ball now moved up to the 23 yard line. Clock winds under 30 seconds. By the time they get this one off, it will be right at the 30 second mark. Reba in the shotgun has Alston as his setback straight behind him. Now they're going now from the I formation, and Austin will be the tailback. Reba tries to draw him off, and he does. And Reba with a hard count is going to get a first down here. Back to back offsides penalties. Fourth and eight, and two offsides penalties. And right now, Coach Coolis is losing his mind. Yeah, lack of discipline in the last two plays by the young Wildcats up front. Don't give him the first down, he's saying. And that's exactly what they did with back to back. Offsides penalties, uh, the last one on a hard count from Reba. Well, Aaron Rodgers hard, hard count down there. First and 10 from the 18 yard line. Reba from the shotgun has Alston behind him. Reba hands off to Alston, Alston off left end, has a seam heading toward the end zone, reaches out and knocked down at the five yard line. Elijah Alston looked like he had some daylight, but give the Wildcats credit. Fly into the football, that is the end of the first quarter. Seven for MFA, nothing for Cheshire, but Cheshire is knocking on touchdown's door. When we come back in the second quarter, it will be second down from the five yard line. Where are we going? Well, they're going down the other end of the field. <laughs> I'll show you where we're going. So, uh, listen, Casey, a very, very, outside of the two penalties there to close out the first quarter for NFA, an incredibly clean played uh, first 12 minutes of football by both teams. Listen, Cheshire came out. Um, tried to establish themselves on the ground a little bit. NFA shut them down in initial possession. And NFA had a big play with Shane McMahon away with his feet, with his arm, improvising all over the field. Right now they're up 7-0. And Cheshire, like you said, any good team on the road, not panicking, just going to right the ship a little bit, stick with their stuff, and they're knocking on the, uh, knocking on the goal line right now. Veteran move to the Reba hard count. Just a very poised yeah. veteran move. Now we have seen from this NFA team both here and on the road, some memorable goal line stands in recent memory. Last year, New London on Thanksgiving Day was inside the 10-yard line about four different times, and NFA kept him out each and every time. The one name we haven't called yet is the guy who made the memorable hit last big, year. Big Dougie That's Moore. Big Dougie yeah. Moore. So down here, you got to figure that Cheshire's going to use those big offensive linemen, and the NFA linebackers and corners are going to have to make tackles. They're going to be isolated. One on one. Angelone is the lone wide receiver left. I formation. Reba on her center. Hands off to Austin. Austin cuts back inside, spins, and he's in the end zone for a Cheshire touchdown. Austin from five yards out, Casey hit the hole, got a big hole spun, and a nice drive that time put together by the Cheshire Rams. No panic in this team. Elijah Austin with some power and strength in the hole. And the Rams are an extra point away from tying up this ball game, much to the delight of the Ram faithful here at Norwich Free Academy. And give Cheshire credit, they travel, and that is all you want to see in a Friday night football game. Yeah, 18 yards rushing in the last two plays alone for Austin on a drive. Five carries, 27 yards, and a touchdown. Low snap, but the senior Bronson, no problem. I think he kicked that one to Salem. 7-7 seven, seven at the end of... What has been a very memorable period in a minute. Two teams going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, not afraid of each other. Got to love it. Let's see what happens here, how the Wildcats can respond because they had opportunities. Now, tie score, see how the possession ends up here for NFL. Yeah, and I, and I think one of the things that NFA and the coaching staff is going to talk about in the sidelines is we can't give a team, a good team like this, any opportunities. Casey, they went from fourth and eight to a first down on the 18 yard line. So that's, you know, that's again, you know, talk about it as a staff, talk to your team, and as a staff, you gotta say, well, we kinda gave him that one. We helped him get that touchdown. Yeah, I mean, what a huge difference. They were fourth and eight with an opportunity to really dig their heels in. Instead, they give up a touchdown essentially. Once those two back to back penalties, it was, I mean, was ever in doubt. They, got, they, they, they basically got a first down without even snapping the football. I mean, did you have any doubt Cheshire was gonna score no. once, once they no. got that first down? No doubt. No doubt. And again, and when it's a good football team like that, you can't give them, you can't give them the plays. Bronson to kick off from the 40. 
the Parkers, Elijah and Caleb stand back on their own goal line. Kid's got a big foot, kicked it all the way to the end zone last time. Let's see what he's got this time. Spots up and it's a squib kick. They're gonna avoid the Parkers, taken by the front man for NFA and driven to the ground at the 35 yard line. It was taken by our man, Dougie Moore. And he's down at the 30. He says, I like to give the hits. I don't like taking them. <laughs> oh, big, big Dougie Moore. Mike DeMauro down the sideline. They're going to see him from here. I he's appreciate he's wearing a color that we yeah. can see. They stand yeah. out blue. First and 10 NFA from their own 35-yard line. 11.50 remaining here in the first half. 7-7 seven, seven ball game, Sports Doc. Peter Wap, yeah, producer, listening from uh, Vermont, New Hampshire. Maine. Sam, one yeah, them. Maine. One yeah. Of them. Hi, Peter. McMahon away going to throw on first down. Out in the flat it goes, and it's complete to Spruill, and it's going to be a gain of about six on first down. Jaheim Spruill and NFA right back on the ball. They're going to go hurry up again. They're going to go three wet left. Briggs, Pomeroy, and Mokentine out left, and Spruill stays right. Preston, toss left, looking for a block. Cuts it back inside, bounces off a tackle. Has a first down over the 45-yard line. Tough run inside by Sean Preston. And that time you saw the agility and the power of the NFA offensive line, Casey, getting down the line, then making blocks downfield. Preston turned it up, got 12 yards. First down, clock running. McManaway is going to throw. He's looking down the right, and he hits in stride. Looks like Briggs out there on the sideline. Quick first down to his tight end, Tyler Briggs. That's going to be a gain of about five on first down. Like one of those little New England Second Patriot throw seven. runs. Five different players have caught passes thus far in the ballgame for the Cats. Handoff straight up the middle to Preston. Preston off a left tackle. Spins and reaches forward to about the Cheshire 45-yard line. It's going to bring up third Sean and about a yard. Five, and Cheshire getting back on defense. NFA right up on the ball. McManaway, quarterback keeper. He'll have a first down. Two crosses the 45 to the 43. First down, Wildcats. And what this quick tempo offense for NFA is doing is not allowing the Cheshire to set themselves. I mean, NFA is dictating the pace with their quarterback play. McManaway looking to throw over the middle, has his receiver. That's Mulkentine all the way to the 30, the 25 yard line. Another eight yard gain on first down for and the Wildcats. A, and a great job by Mulkentine turning around and making himself available for his senior quarterback. Great pitching catch. McManaway toss right to Hamlin, excuse me, to Preston, Preston, first down, spins, still on his feet and knocked down and a flag comes down late as he was knocked down at the 25 yard line. And I'll tell you right now, McManaway is getting up to the ball so fast, his receivers are barely having time to get set. Could be a bit of a personal foul or a hold on the outside. Jeffrey and Angelone combined personal, on the yep. tackle. Personal foul, blow to the head. Personal foul, head to head contact on Cheshire. That was Jeffrey and Angelo fly into the football, and they got Preston to the helmet, and that's going to march the ball all the way inside the 10 to, nope, sorry, just outside the 10. Looks like they're going to put it at the 12-yard line. We've got Shane McMahon, and we're unofficially for 15 throws already in this ballgame. He's getting the shotgun. Preston's to his right, four receivers. McManaway wants to throw. Throws out in the flat, tipped, and he was looking for Mulkentine. Mulkentine well defended out there. Out on the play for Cheshire was their cornerback, Tim Hoynes, and Hoynes cl uh, closed very quickly on Mulkentine. Second and 10. Same formation, Preston to the left of McManaway. McManaway, no pressure, rolls right, tucks it, now he's gonna run, heads to the sideline and he's pushed out of bounds after a gain of maybe five yards. Call it four, it's going to bring up third and six. Ball's going to be at about the six, about the seven yard line. Well, he's a lot faster than you would think too for a quarterback too, Casey. You know, we're so used to seeing Jawan Johnson, our home run hitter back there for the Cats, but this kid has got some feet, man. He can move. Let's call it third and seven from the 10. <laughs> Let's see if those feet of McManaway can make something happen here on a big third down play. He's staring at the sideline. Yep. He wants to play. They're bringing it in, and here we go. Third and seven. McManaway drops, looks left, pumps, corner route, looking for Pomeroy. It's in the through his hands, incomplete. That's the second time Kevin Pomeroy has had a touchdown through his hands. Not an easy catch by any stretch, but twice through his hands. Yeah, the stare down, and the time, the stare down, stare down, and then look back and throw to Pomeroy in the corner and just out of his reach. If he was 6'2", 6'3", maybe 6'4", he'd have two touchdowns tonight. 
Flag on the play. Ill illegal shift, it looks like, against NFA, and they're going to de decline it. That's going to bring up fourth down. Interesting call here from NFA. Tough from the right hash for a field goal. They're going to go for it. Now they're sending out the big unit here. And it looks like we're going to go for the, yeah, they're going to go for the field goal here on fourth and eight. I think that's a good call. You don't often see a guy with the number 75 kicking your, uh, <laughs> kicking your uh, field goals. <laughs> Uh, but NFA sends out their kicker, George Sation. Snap is good, hold down, kick is up. And what a nice kick, bang through the uprights. It is good. Sessions, Sessions good. Uh, field goal puts NFA back on top 10-7 with 10.02 remaining here in the first half. Yeah, great drive that time by NFA to answer the score of Shelton Casey. They went with 68 yards in less than two minutes. There's 10.02 still left here in the first quarter. NFA has had no trouble getting the ball up and down the field on this Cheshire defense. They've had trouble converting a couple times, but I think getting three points right there, huge for the Cats. Yeah, I would agree, Sports Doctor. Coming out of that trip with no points would have been, I don't want to say disastrous, but after giving up points when you're looking at a fourth and eight in the other direction, and then if they didn't get points there, I think that would have been a real a balloon deflator. It was a little like. empty. They would have felt a little bit empty as they went 68 yards and, and didn't get anything. But, you know, they converted in the kicking game. They've got themselves back on top. And it's a, um, you know, it's a football game here. I don't know. It's a track meet. Man, I don't know if you're going to have a voice left by the end of this game. I don't know. If, yeah, it, might, it might be you and uh, you and Tim and Carlos. Yeah. This thing, but I might get the mic tomorrow up here. Connor, Connor Kelly up Connor there. Connor's, yeah. Connor's back with the crew. Junior voice is tomorrow. Gang, we'll, yeah, we'll, gang. We'll pencil it in. We'll pencil it in. Someone, yeah. someone will help it out. Be out. Yeah. Parker's going to kick off for NFA from his own 40-yard line. Back deep. At the academy. At the academy. Angelone and Jeffrey standing back deep for Cheshire. 10-7 NFA on top here. 10 minutes remaining in the first half from NFA. Beautiful night. See my stats here down on my stat sheet? Chicken scratch. Well done. Yeah. It's your prescription. <laughs> the doctor, they, the doctor. You're a true doctor. <laughs> Pooch high spinning kick comes to Jeffrey at about the 10. He heads up towards the right sideline, looks to break a tackle, does and falls past the 35 to the 37 yard line. Michael Jeffrey is a big kid with a head of steam. Tough to bring down in good field position for Cheshire at the 37-yard line. You know, it's funny. I mean, you know, when you go back to London, Casey, you see a lot of friends and family and you know, a lot of people you know. And it's the same thing with the sports doctor. When he comes back to Norwich, my old stomping grounds, Jeff Blindeman, you know, the Blindemans, uh, Ray Gillette, my brother-in-law. I mean, they're all here tonight, and we, uh, we appreciate it. And uh, we appreciate the support here on game day and today.com. And here we go. First down for Cheshire. Reba in the shotgun. And we're going to get a flag on the play. Maybe too much time. That play, well, they're letting the play go, but the flag came down. That's McAlinden that's going off. Nine-yard gain by McAlinden. We're going to get an illegal substitution. I don't know what we're going to get here. Let's find out. Free play. Looks like offsides on NFA. It is against NFA. Sideline infraction looks side like. Sideline, yeah. You don't see that call very often, but we're going to have a first down Cheshire. A, Actually, they're going to say out of after nine yards. All right, it was so, a warning. Warning on the sidelines. Nine-yard gain by Malika Linden on first down. And we're going to get a second and one. Alston is now the setback. Reba goes back into the shotgun. Reba. Gives to Alston. Alston cuts to the outside. First down, Elijah Alston. And Cheshire ball right about midfield as he broke off tackle and got enough yardage to move the chains. First down, Cheshire. Yeah, and both those Cheshire tailbacks, Casey, have an ability to get some tough yards, gain three or four, and they both have home run hitting ability as well. I like the tandem and backs that the, the Rams have. Yeah, a little inside, outside, a little speed and quickness. Here we go with Alston the, as the setback. Reba goes from the shotgun. Reba puts it in Austin's gut. Off the left tackle. Stacked up there by Moore. Nice job by Dougie Moore on his first hit. Gain of maybe half a yard that time as Austin couldn't get any room in between the tackles. 
Seven carries for 31 yards for Austin. Bit of a north-south upright runner. Second and nine. Reba calling the play from the line. Now McAlinden's back in the backfield with him. Reba, hands off. McAlinden and a nice job in the secondary, shooting up from his secondary position for NFA. I don't even know who's we Number seven. McAllen on the carry. That was Becker Bordeaux, the Becker junior. Bordeaux the Becker Bordeaux the came flying up from his linebacker position and got McAlinden loss of a yard. It's been feast or famine for McAlinden. He's had great runs. He's also had some uh, losses behind the line because the NFA linebackers and quarterbacks are, are selling out on the run, coming up and trying to make tackles. Third down and 11, ball at the 48-yard line of Cheshire. Reba from the shotgun. He's going to throw. Straight drop, has time. Throws incomplete, looking for Tim Hoynes at the 40-yard line and just out of the outreached hands of Hoynes. And NFA holds, and we'll get the ball back from Cheshire. Yeah, three straight incompletions by Reba Casey, and he's had a hard time connecting with his receivers on those out patterns. Those are tough throws to make to the other side of the field in a position where only a receiver can get him. He's got the arm, he just hasn't been able to connect. Bronson's going to kick. Parker's deep. Last time we saw Bronson, he kicked one to the moon. Snap is good. A little rush by NFA. They don't get to him. And a high, spiraling, beautiful kick. It bounces off of Parker. And Cheshire's going to recover the football inside the 10 yard line. What, what? Big mistake by Parker. Wow, what's Parker doing out there? If you're not going to catch it, let it go. Wow, is, that is what? a huge mental error out there. Will Boy, number 22, the specials, slid onto the football, and what an enormous play and mistake by Parker, who you don't expect that from at all. But the good news for NFA is that he slid out of bounds, and they will retain possession. So he did not have oh, wow. possession in bounds. But it's still first and 10 from their own 10-yard line. I thought Cheshire had that ball. I was confused. McManaway looks to throw. Out he goes to Spruill. Spruill has it, gain of about eight yards on first down. So what we're seeing, what we saw, and it'll be great to see this. This is one of those things where I love seeing the replay of this. He slid, and I think he slid out of bounds before he had possession. Yeah, he didn't have possession of the football, correct. McManaway, pressured, rolls right, eludes the rush, throws on the run, incomplete, just kind of throwing it away. But heavy pressure that time on McManaway. Did a nice job eluding the rush and got rid of the football, but flying to the football for Cheshire were the cornerbacks and defensive ends. McManaway, roll, keeps it himself, gonna die for the first down, and he's gonna just get the first down, get out of bounds, and get out of dodge, move those chains. The fake handoff in the inside to Preston. McManaway took it off the right side, Casey. Needed three, got four, first and 10 Wildcats. Connor Whalen is a 6'6", 200 pound defensive end and he has been chasing McManaway on these last few plays. In motion now Pomeroy. Pomeroy goes wide out to the left. Hamlin's alone back. Hamlin gets the ball straight up the middle. Not a lot of running room but Hamlin will move the ball forward right up the middle between the tackles for a gain of about four. A straight power football that time by the Cats. Hamlin took the handoff, put his head down and got four hard yards second down and six with just under seven minutes to go in the second quarter. Hamlin stands to McManaway's left. Two receivers left, two receivers right. NFA likes this formation and they like to throw out of it. And there goes McManaway, looking to throw. Had a crossing route and it's intercepted by Angelone. Angelone to the 20, Angelone to the 10. Pick six, Cheshire Rams. And what a momentum shift in this ball game. Yeah, confusion on that route by the NFA Wildcats is two receivers, Casey, in the same spot, ball slightly thrown behind Malkentine. And again, pick six by Cheshire. But again, the last couple times here for NFA, uh, some mental mistakes coming on. A muff on a punt, cost himself about 15 yards in field position, and now two guys running the same pass pattern. And that, you know, I hate to beat this point, Casey, but you can't give a good team like Cheshire opportunities, easy opportunities. Well, I want you to take a look at it. They gave, they had mental mistakes with the back-to-back -back penalties. Cheshire goes right down the field and scores. They have a uh, mistake with the muffed punt. Cheshire 
Pins him back. They make a mistake on the route. Eric Angelone picks six. And now on the other side of things, now Cheshire with its first lead of the ball game, 14 to 10. 6.34 remaining in the first half. Now we got to see how NFA responds trailing for the first time. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I don't think it's anything, you know, you know, physically or, you know, NFA lacking any kind of ability. It's just get your head in the game a little bit right now. Let's get refocused. I mean, this is a game, Casey, against a good team where you just can't make small mistakes. Yeah, they put Mulkentine in motion. They wanted to run him on a little crossing route, and someone else was in his space, and that's what the problem there was. Now, I think with the punt, Sports Doctor, I have to be honest with you, I don't think NFA's, even in practice, has yeah. used to seeing a ball kicked as high yeah, 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 yeah. as Bronson's kicking the ball. I think Parker just misjudged it yeah. because that ball was – That's in, that, now you realize why – I would it's a say, college kick. I, well, I, being a punt returner in the NFL, it might be like one of the five. I, I would defy people to go out and just see if you can catch one. And you realize how high, how much the ball moves. There's wind up there. I could do it. No. That's the way we can do it. <laughs> I, I could do it. No. I've been, I went to ESPN Well to Sports one time and did it. No, you got no chance. I could do it. No, you got no chance. Came out of the jugs going. Yeah, no chance. Ten uh, years ago. Be, I think Belton was the receiver in the uh, cross-up with Mulcatine. No chance. Another squib kick. Ball's still loose. They're going to have it go out of bounds. Flag will come down. Good field position for NFA. I got six to one, says you can't catch. I don't have what, five balls? I, you can't catch two out of five. That's 40%. 40%. Yeah, that's, that's 40%. You can't even play in the CFL. I mean, you have little faith in me, don't you? Uh, no, no, it's not little faith. I think I have absolutely accurate faith. You're 48 years old. I saw you run in two, I saw you run two wheel routes. You couldn't breathe. Yeah. I yeah, catch I a mean, punt. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> have, you, faith. have you noticed who, who I have not said could do it? yourself. That's right. If you know, I'm not putting myself <laughs> out there. All right, here we go. NFA, first and 10 from their own 35-yard line. Pomeroy goes in motion. McManaway rolls to his right, throws and hits Pomeroy in the flat for a quick gain of about five on first down. I think it's a good idea to just get the ball in Pomeroy's hands. He's had two, I don't want to call them drops. He's had two missed opportunities. I think it was nice to get it, get the ball in his hands, yeah. a little success. Easy pitch and catch, like you said, to roll out to the outside. Pomeroy, all he's got to do is sit down on the pattern. Strike delivered by McManaway. Toss left to Preston. Preston cuts it back inside and a nice tackle. Right at midfield, uh, excuse me, at, right at the middle of the field. Tackle made out there. Linebackers for, and that was uh, Nick Nelson, the big main tackler for Cheshire. And this is that uncomfortable down and distance that we've seen so far in this ballgame, Casey. Third and six for the NFA offense. And I know they like to go hurry up, but they don't get it here and they're gonna give Cheshire time to get back on the board. McManaway has time. There's that crossing route, and Steady throws behind Pomeroy, and he had Mulkentine wide open on the crossing route. Instead, he went to try to throw it to Pomeroy, and he threw it a little bit behind Pomeroy. That chalked that one up on McManaway. He had the first down with Mulkentine, and he yeah. took a shot as well. Yeah, he's, he's a little limpy coming off the field. He, he, he would like to have that one back, but that was the first kind of like bad throw we've seen McManaway make all game. Now, I was going to say this. 5.53, Cheshire with the ball, up four, and they get the ball in the second half. This is, you know, NFA's got to be careful that they're not staring at like 28-10 coming out of halftime. Nice kick by Parker, spirals over the head of Angelone who lets it bounce, and it's going to take a great NFA roll inside the 10 to the six and a half, seven yard line. What a great punt by Elijah Parker. A 64 yard punt by Elijah Parker, flipping field position for the NFA Wildcats just with the doctor ordered for NFA. Six, just under six minutes. 5.38 left to go here in the second quarter. So ball will be marked inside the 10, where it will be first down for Cheshire. The entire field ahead of them. We'll see what they come up with here. Plenty of time for this offense, up four points. Man, would they love to stick in. And now, after we've seen Bronson kick, I think field goal, and they're in field goal range at midfield. With yeah, this in the 35-yard line. First down, Reba will come out. The senior quarterback has led Cheshire on one scoring drive, the other courtesy of a pick six by Eric Angelo. Reba, he wants to throw. Instead, hands off straight up the middle. Not much there. Nice job by the NFA defense as they closed in the tackles and a gain of maybe three. It'll be second down. Gabriel See, this is another benefit of being in the yeah. crowd. Give us a little bit of insider information, Sports Doctor. Is that Elijah, Elijah Alston? 
out of the game right now on the sidelines with his pads off, Casey. Big loss for the Cheshire for however long it is. Reba gives the ball, now throws it, swings it out to Jeffrey. Nice screen, Jeffrey's got room. Jeffrey's got a first down. Jeffrey's got one man, he tries to duke out with Parker and Parker rides him out, but what a huge play. Well set up by Cheshire and they're over midfield into NFA territory. Huge play by Michael Jeffrey. 50 yard pitch and catch that time uh, by Jeffrey. He's just a great, great route and he saw the speed on the outside. What a huge play. I love the call. They went out, They haven't thrown that pass yet. They haven't run that screen yet. What a great call deep in their own end. They uh, froze the linebackers with the fake handoff and they let Jeffrey work in space with single coverage. Yeah, and that, and that completion right there broke a string of three straight incompletions you know, by the quarterback, Casey. And like you said, a safe bubble screen that turned into a 50-yard game. First and 10, Cheshire now at the NFA 41-yard line. 4.53 remaining here in the half after a huge play to Michael Jeffrey. Reba hands the ball off. Nice run straight up the middle by McAlinden. And he's going to have a big time gain on first down between left tackle. And that's going to get about seven or eight yards on first down. Second down and two for Cheshire. Yeah, straight north-south downhill running by the young man. Casey, eight yards on first down, second down and two. And it opens up the entire playbook with down and distance here for the Rams. 421, second and two, Cheshire. Reba from the shotgun. Hands off again. Right, right. Gonna be close to the first down. McAllendon again. Nope, this time they went to number eight. A new running back into the ball game for Cheshire. That's Cola Scotto. And he's gonna get the first down. Cheshire ball's gonna move up to the 30 yard line as we head down to four minutes. Lascoto taking the snaps for for Austin as he's over on the sidelines right now getting treatment. First down, Rams. Reba from the shot, has a Skoto with him. Hands the ball off, a Skoto gets a nice hole, breaks it off right, off left tackle, cuts it back inside for about a seven yard gain. Now you're starting to see that offensive line of Cheshire exerting their influence here NFA on their heels, 335 remaining. Yeah, some big running lanes up front for the back right now for Cheshire. And like you said, moving bodies up front. Number big 79, your guy doing work up front for the Rams. Second and a short three. 320 remaining here in the half. Reba from the shotgun. Fakes the handoff, throws out in the flat to Jeffrey. Makes a nice catch, first down as Michael Jeffrey with great hands and footwork made the catch, stutter stepped, and out of bounds it will become another first down for the Rams. Rams on the move, north-south plays up the middle, and then that time you saw the pass to the outside. Ravis found his rhythm a little bit, got a couple easy throws underneath him, Casey. Man's playing with, young man's playing with a lot of confidence right now. Ravis stands in the shotgun, McElhinney in the right backfield with him. NFA showing blitz and they got Zeboth to move on the left tackle. Got him to move. He was the big uh, big Drew Zebarth, 6'7, 317. Got him to move as the Wildcats showed blitz, and that'll back Cheshire up five yards. Yeah, uh, dead ball, false start, yeah. I like uh, Bakulis's NFA's coach's reasoning there. You're back on your heels, get offensive with it, shoot a blitz, and result being they got. A little First movement there 15. from the Cheshire front. It's going to be first and 15. Ball marked at the 19-yard line. Cheshire well within the field goal range of their kicker. There's a big two minutes and 49 seconds for this NFA defense right here. Officials marking the football. And we had a shoe check on the field. We got a shoelace that's not working right now. So we will official sign out. All right. And we can go back, back to business. That was Becker Bordeaux with the shoelace problem. You know, in the Little League uh, Baseball, we yell out shoe check, and about seven kids go down and tie their shoes because they're perpetually untied in Little League Baseball. Going to get some scores coming up here as well in this big night yeah, I get some in the stuff. ACC. First and 15. Ball at the 19-yard line. And we have still have an official timeout. 
Yeah. Tying shoelaces and something, something's going on down there in the in the end zone that they needed to attend to. Looks like they're they got things back together. But now our official is walking back to his position. And here we go, back to football. First and 15, ball at the 19-yard line, 249 remaining in the half. Cheshire on top, 14-10, and driving. Reba from the shotgun. Snap is good. Hands off to McLinden, has it seen, cuts it back inside, breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle. Touchdown, Cheshire Rams, Jake McLinden. Left side of the Treasure offensive line imposing its will. Some good seal blocks on the outside by the wide receivers. And Cheshire starting to put their own little stamp on this ball game as he winds up towards the halftime. That was just a, that run was just toughness and will right there. Breaking multiple tackles. They tried to get him low. He was having none of it. And the Rams up on top 20 to 10 with 233 remaining here in the first half. Let's go, Cheshire! Bronson in for the extra point. Good snap, good hold, and the kick is through. He can just kick it off at school. And with 2.33 here in the half, 21-10 Cheshire. Kick that ball back to Taffel. I mean, this kid's got a boot on him. Oh, it's gut check time now for the academy as they got two minutes and 33 seconds left to go to get a score back of their own. But it's, it's the errors, it's the mistakes that have led to Cheshire's 21 points. Uh, it's, you know... A couple of penalties, a muff punt, a pick six, and then giving up a 51-yard pass play, Casey. Yeah, give Cheshire credit for a well-timed uh, and well-executed play, but really, you know, NFA is looking at things glass half full, half empty. Cheshire's thinking, you know, maybe they're thinking we should be already up this much. NFA is probably thinking we're two or three different mistakes away right. from this being a different ball game. But uh, if I were NFA, the concern right now would be that uh, Cheshire really seems to be winning the war at the uh, line right now. Yeah, up front. Yeah, the left side of the offensive line imposing their will and ability. You're running the football. You know, they're, they're doing a nice job in the passing game as well. Uh, there's not a lot of pressure on Reba when he steps back to pass. So, like you said, the big people are earning paychecks up front for Cheshire. So we're going to have NFA see what they do offensively. They've been going full speed ahead. Let's see if they have a chance to try to get some points here. They send the Parker brothers back. Bronson's going to kick it off from the 40. Last time, we squibbed it. Let's see what he does here. Another squib kick. Shoots by Moore. Bounces up to Parker at the 15-yard line. Parker heads up the right hash. Crosses the 20, 30. And that's where he's ridden out of bounds. Excuse me, ridden to the ground. It'll be first and 10. Chesh uh, man, I am. Yeah, I mean, you're I'm running NFL, out of gas. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. running out of gas right now. You know what, I'm going I'm to let you talk for 10 seconds. You're going to give me a Gatorade at halftime, too. No, you're going to give me a Gatorade at halftime. Shane McMahon away. Officially, unofficially, he's thrown the ball 17 times in the first half, Casey. 17 throws. Here we go. First and 10, NFA. McMahon away from the shotgun. Four receiver set. He's going to throw. McMahon away. Pressured. Steps up. And he'll be sacked. Sacked as, as the pocket is collapsing around McMahon away. He has had very little time to throw. Down to two minutes. McMahon away. Going to go hurry up. McMahon away. Wants to throw. Looking. Pressured again. Nothing there. Throws it over the head of Pomeroy. And we're going to get a flag. That's going to be a hold. As right now, Cheshire is exerting its will. And defensive end Connor Whalen at 6'6", 200 pounds, has lived in McMahon away's jersey over the, about the last quarter and a half. It's going to be a big... Penalty mark around the play. And they're going to decline it? They're going to decline the penalty. They want to bring up that third and, third and ten from, from the 31-yard line with only two minutes remaining. Actually, they were going to call offsetting penalties. There was a pass right. interference call as well. So it'll still be second and ten from the 31-yard line. McMahon away. Looks to throw. Throws a little screen out into the flat. And crushed as soon as he caught the ball. Tim Hoynes came up and absolutely planted Michael Hamlin. And 142 remaining. That was a gain of maybe a yard. But Hoynes came up. Now they're flying to the football are these Cheshire Rams. Yeah, Cheshire's playing with a lot of confidence right now on the defensive side of the ball. In motion, Pomeroy. Belton, they're switching the formation, going trip receivers to the right. Hamlin stands next to McManaway. Mulkentine is the wide receiver left. McManaway wants to throw. Has time this time. 
Deep sideline pattern. Has Molkentine. He catches it at the 50. Down the sideline, 40. Molkentine to the 30. The 20. Cuts inside. Jeffrey. Touchdown. NFA. Nolan Molkentine. 71 yards on the pitch and catch that time. Shane McManoway stepping up and showing his big time arm. Huge, huge touchdown by the Wildcats with 105 left to go here in the first half. Nobody big. saw that one coming, Sports Doctor. Oh, what a big time throw by McManaway. That was a great throw by McManaway and a great catch by the sure handed Mulkentine. And then he beat Cheshire's best defender out there, Jeffrey. And extra point down, kick is up. And it is good. And with 105 remaining in the half, a huge touchdown for NFA brings them back within four. 21 17. Maybe not enough time for Cheshire to make a big drive down the field because they are going to get the ball in the second half. And this NFA defense needs to get in to the locker room. Yeah, yeah, they do, Casey. But what a big score for the confidence alone of the Wildcats. Got to get that offense back in rhythm. And how about a 71 yard touchdown pass to do it? I mean, that, that was just an unbelievable throw to sophomore Nolan Mulkentine. Oh, he likes him, though. He, he oh. likes number three out there. Ran a great pattern. Casey, that was a one-man pass pattern down the sidelines. Home run, NFA. Started with the protection, which they haven't had recently, and they took the time, and that was what was important was McManaway had time, had the ability to stay in the pocket, look downfield, and then once Mulkentine caught it, Jeff, you know, he beat the cornerback. The safety, Jeffrey, was the only one left. Fancy footwork down the sidelines. Made a couple of cuts, did a little of this, did a little of that. Kind of looked like the sports doctor out there running the uh, post pattern. You know, that's funny because that's exactly what I thought of when I yeah, said I know you did. I said that looks like the sports doctor. Just the pattern too. right there. You'd still be out there running right now. You'd be at the sports doctor at the 30. <laughs> I mean, that was, the, the play happened two minutes ago. Sports doctor at the 25. <laughs> <laughs> One oh, oh, hey, listen, I talk, I talk a lot of noise for the guy that just stood back there and threw it. <laughs> <laughs> Notice I didn't try to run a wheel route. You didn't ride the bike either. My wheel was flat. Oh, Parker man. to kick off from his own 40-yard line. Jeffrey and Angelone back deep for Cheshire. High spiraling kick will come down to Jeffrey at the 25-yard line. Michael Jeffrey heads to the right sideline. Jeffrey cuts it back to the middle. Jeffrey's still on his feet. Jeffrey eludes another attacker. Michael Jeffrey's in the open. Michael Jeffrey's got Parker to beat. And Elijah Parker saves a huge play by Michael Jeffrey. He could have had a touchdown, but a nice tackle. But there you go, Cheshire right knocking on the door. Yeah, we saw Jeffrey earlier on the 51-yard screen pass pattern, Casey, on the outside. And there you see his speed on the special teams. 45-yard return. Uh, Cheshire sets up shop at the NFA 34-yard line with 53 seconds left to go in half. 53 seconds, a lot of time. And don't forget, the kicker, Bronson, has a leg and a half. So they're almost already in field goal position. But right now, NFA on its heels. This defense has been tired. Escoto's in the backfield with Reba. Reba from the shotgun, wants to throw. Straight drop, little screen pass it goes, throws it out in the flat to Escoto. And he does not get out of bounds. The clock's going to wind. He tried to get out of bounds on the left sideline and couldn't. Second and nine. I believe Cheshire's only got one timeout left as well. No, no timeouts. Heading up to the football. They're running the clock. Reba, he has to wait for his receivers to get in position. Now he has them from the shotgun. Reba drops. Pressure from the edge. Steps up. Throws. Hits Angelone. Angelone sprints for the sideline and gets out of bounds. After a gain of seven with 23 seconds remaining, it'll be third down and five for Cheshire. Pass complete to number eight, kicking out of bounds. Big third down here for the NFA defense, Casey. 23 seconds left to go in a half. Third and four from the 29, Reba from the shotgun. Straight drop, pressure up the middle, lost it to the sideline, has a man in stride, touchdown, Eric Angelone. No! They're saying he goes out of bounds at the one yard line. A huge break for NFA, but with 16.6 seconds remaining, Cheshire is at the one yard line. What a great catch on the fingertips from Eric Angelone. And a great job outreaching. Angelone makes the catch. Casey couldn't get in. Would be first and goal, Cheshire from the three. 16 seconds left to go, and I believe no timeouts for the Rams. 
Big offensive line now. Escoto is the lone back, and we're going to get a timeout by NFA. They need to set up this defense as a stunning pass that time from Reba to Angelone. I thought he was in the end zone. They got a break, did the Wildcats. He stepped out at the three. 16.6 seconds remaining. You probably have time to run it once, and then you got to throw it or spike it. Or you could probably take two cracks at passes. You know, it, yeah, I, I would I definitely agree with that. And the luxury of having a tall wide receiver on the outside. You know, Reba put that ball in a perfect position, hit his man. I thought he had six. Again, we'll set them up first and goal from the three-yard line. All right, Sports Doctor, you are the offensive your play caller here for, for Cheshire. What are, your, what are your call here? What do you got? I'm going to run the ball up the gut with number 43. You're going to give it to Mecklen? Yes, I'm going right. to give it to Mecklen, yes. And you're gonna I'm going to get on the back of my offensive line. I'm going to say, listen, clear the way, get me three yards. Get the, give the ball to Mac and let him do his work. Left side. And if you don't get in, you got to rush up to the ball. You rush up and spike, spike it Spike it, and yeah. on third down, you can choose to throw it or kick the field goal. I think you got something here, Sports Doctor. But they got it. It's not going to be him because they got a Scoto in the backfield. But no. if you're still thinking run here left, thinking run left. Reba from the shotgun in motion. Jeffrey. Reba rolls right, looks to throw. Pressured, wide open in the end zone, and through his hands, he had Angelone wide open in the end zone. He was hit as he threw, but the sure-handed Angelone lost it. Angelone started on the outside of the formation case. He came up all the way across. The end zone tried to make the catch, couldn't corral it. And it looks like Cheshire is sending in Bronson. They don't want to take any chances with only 11 seconds remaining and no timeouts. Nope, they're not. They're sending in the fullback, so they're going to go full. <laughs> and we're going to have a timeout. Boys, the big boys are coming in. They did send in the heavy package. The big fullback. They sent in Jay Caro, and they, he's going to put him in front of Mac, and they were going to run this thing off the left half. Off the left, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt about that. That was a play late, a dollar short. I thought they were going to go and say, you know what, 11 seconds left, kick the field goal. But that's why I'm not the one with the headset. Yeah, they sent in the big fullback, 5'10", 195. Yeah, it was a great play call, Casey, that time on first down, too. They had everybody moving to the right. Wide receiver cut across the back of the end zone, back to the left. Set up shop, stopped. Reba put the ball right where he needed to. Ball was dropped. And Great I, play call. And what I love on first, I love here, they bring in, a, they bring in uh, Jay Como, who we haven't seen all day, right? He's a big 5'10", they put Mac behind him, and they go, you know what? We have, you haven't seen this look yet. We're, we're, you know what we're right. doing. We're going behind. <laughs> One left side, yes. We're going behind the big guy. All right, here we go. Second and three, 11 and point five. You want to know what they're going to do? Go, they're running left side with number 43. Yeah, they got power high right now. Does Cheshire. Reba's under center. NFA ball loose, bad snap, pitch right, there's nobody there. Can McKellen get there? And he does for a Cheshire touchdown on a broken play. Wow, busted play, trick or treat comes early for the Cheshire Rams. Wow. With 3.9 seconds, that is a heartbreaker. Jake, we're gonna call, we're gonna call him Big Mac now after the heads up play there on a broken play. Mac Linden with his Second touchdown of the game. Wow, a busted play that time. Extra point in. It's up and it is good. And with 3.9 seconds remaining, Cheshire on top, 28-17. How much action have we seen in the last three minutes of this football game? It's been a crazy football game. NFA come down with a big drive and a score. Uh, you know, with McManaway's arm to uh, Mokentine, and then, you know, the, the big run back on the kickoff, Casey. And again, it's the little things. It's the penalties, the special teams, uh, the, the pick sixes, the turnovers, the little things when you have two teams like this that, in my opinion, are pretty evenly matched, the little things really glare. And this is why NFA wants to try to play teams like Cheshire. Yeah. And this is why Cheshire plays this schedule every year. I mean, this, is, this is their conference. This is what they play week in and week out, where execution and, uh, you know, the ability to improvise, like you said, becomes paramount. Yep. And that's what we're seeing here is that, you know, Cheshire is doing this week in and week out. This is a test for NFA. Ethan and every time they have given Cheshire an inch 
Cheshire is rammed it right through that edge. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it's again the penalties, the 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 pick six, the the special teams. You, you, you're right, Casey. You're gonna give a good team like Cheshire an inch. They're gonna take it the entire length of a football field. 3.9 seconds remaining. This will probably be the last play of the first half. Bronson approaches the ball and he punches it over Parker's head. It touches Parker's hand. He gets it at the goal line and it will be the last play of the half. Straight up the middle goes Parker and he is corralled. And that'll bring us to the end of the first half here at NFA. The fifth ranked Cheshire High School Rams with a 28-17 lead over the game. But trailing NFA Wildcats. We are about to start second half of the ball game. NFA will kick off. Right to left in the radio dial and Casey, squib kick up. All right, and Je hey, you're back. All right, Jeffrey's gonna take it at the 20 yard line and quickly covered by NFA. And I will go out on the limb sports doctor and say this first possession of the second half will determine whether or not NFA can stay in this ball game. Yeah, extremely important for the defense to get a three and out or you know, hold Cheshire to one first down and regain field position and get the football back. Casey, first half that was very evenly contested. Mistakes led to 21 of the 28 points that Cheshire has. Yeah, and we talked about it when you were gone with Mike tomorrow a little bit and just said that's why you play these games, right? right. That's why you learn because a team like Cheshire, we said they're not rattled by any of this stuff. This is week in and week out. Reba in the shotgun with Escato. In motion is Jeffrey. Reba wants to throw, rolls right, throws out in the flat to Jeffrey. Nice catch, and he's wrapped up on the sideline after a gain of about seven yard lines by Dougie Moore. Uh, but that was just very, very easy. Easy pitch and catch for seven yards, and again, roll the quarterback out. Find his man in rhythm, seven yards, second down and three. I mean, you look at that play, and it looks very well covered, and it's a seven yard gain. So, I mean, it's just too easy to get seven yards on first down. 28-17, Cheshire on top of NFA. With the ball are the Rams, second and four from their own 34-yard line. Reba under center. Jeffrey in motion, crosses past them. Toss left to McAlinden. McAlinden being chased out on the edge, reverses field. We're gonna have a block on the edge. McAlinden cuts it back, still on his feet, and finally wrapped down as he crosses midfield. But what a run by Jake McAlinden. He was down 10 yards deep and turned it into a 20 yard game. Yeah, McAlinden ran about 43 yards on that play, side to side, east, west, turns it north, south, and like I said, gains 23. Boy, he's a, got a motor on him for a big kid too. He does, and we thought we had maybe a block on a little clip in the backfield, but they didn't get the call. And Becker Bordeaux finally brought McAlinden down after he crossed midfield, but Cheshire in business again turning nothing into something yeah a man down on the near side for cheshire i can't get his number i i, I think it might be mclinden number 43. we're gonna let them attend to him let's talk a little bit while we have a second here about some of the things you talked about and at halftime with mike tomorrow uh you know you guys talked about the dodgers but you forgot the key you forgot the key to the dodgers and, who, and that and the guy who broke the losing streak the guy they brought in is you darvish you darvish is the guy that makes the Do that turns the dodgers into, the, into a team that's a threat. I knew you were going to find something there. I mean, well, I, you your baseball is your wheelhouse. Well, if you, well I can, when we talk mm -hmm. about, you want to talk about college football, we can do that too. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I have no wheelhouse. My wheelhouse is Do you big. like Wingbush? But Mike, yeah, I do. But yeah. Mike, uh, Mike tomorrow, if he wrote an article about all the cheating that's going on in Boston, and I, would, I, would, I, I forgot <laughs> to mention, he should know, as a Boston college graduate, one of the, one of the birthrights of cheating, Boston College. Oh, there's a point shaving scandal. That's right, but he didn't want to mention that in his article. So. <laughs> and he won't. Reba. Hands off to Escoto, quickly covered up by the center of the NFA line. Dougie Moore in on the tackle, gained maybe a half a yard. And Rabus kind of settled himself into this ball game a little bit, Casey. He had a stretch in the first half where he, you know, he missed four out of five passes. Like he said, get him out on the edge that time. Easy pitch and catch. He's in rhythm. That offense is in high gear right now. You know, picking and choosing spots, left side, right side. You know, Rabus is a big time quarterback back there for Cheshire. Jeffrey goes wide right, Angelone wide left. Reba from the shotgun has a Scoto in the backfield with him. Now he's changing the play, wants to audible, calling out to the sideline, telling his folks what he wants them to do. Reba hands off to Escoto. Escoto off left tackle, not much there. Tripped up again by Dougie Moore. Dougie Moore has come to play here in the second half. Back-to-back -back tackles will bring up third and long. Third and eight for Cheshire, and a big third down for the NFA defense. Yeah, the Cats got to have this one. Like you said, this is the initial possession of the second half for Cheshire. Important for NFA to get that defense off the field. 
get their offense back on. Third and eight from the 47 yard line. Hard to believe but they're down two scores are the Wildcats. Speaking of scores, we'll try to get some of those from of the area games if we can. Third and eight here for Cheshire. Ball at the 47 yard line of NFA. Reba from the shot, fakes the handoff, rolls to his right, throws in the flat to Jeffrey, throws behind him, and a little hit by Caleb Parker on the tail end for good measure. And NFA will hold on its first possession here. It will be punted away for, by Cheshire. Nice job by Parker on the hit, but Reba, that's a throw you know that he normally makes. Yeah, and like I said, just talked about Reba being in rhythm, a little off on that throw, a little behind the receiver, Casey. And like you said, key, key, three and out, or you know, initial first down, but get that Cheshire offense off the field for the NFA defense. Bronson, who's a weapon at punter for Cheshire, in the punt, stands at his own 40. Bangs the punt away, it's a wobbler. Bangs down at the 30 yard line, excuse me, 20 yard line and rolls inside the 20 to about the 10. We'll see where the officials walk right up to the 11, 12 yard line. So NFA will have its first possession of the second half at their own 12. Yeah, and right now, you know, the sure handed Parker back there in the receiving game, Casey, on the end of the punt, a little shaky in this ball game. Let the punt go there, gave up 15, 20 yards in field possession. We saw the muff earlier, which almost cost them a possession, which led to the pick six, but uh, special teams right now for NFA, uh, a little cheeky ground. McMahon away will lead out the NFA offense for their first possession. He's gonna throw. A little quick slant, he wants to throw to Mulkentine, but he underthrew it. That's one of the first poorly thrown balls we've seen by McMahon away. He had McMulkentine on a little in route, and he underthrew him. Quick throw that time. McManaway pounds his chest and said, that was on me. That's my fault. I had a little more time than I thought and made a bad throw. So that since the ball bounced in front of the receiver, whose fault might it be? When he goes, it's my bad, Who, well, who's bad is that? <laughs> I mean, well, who's bad could it be? Well, I've always wondered. I always love that when athletes go, it's my bad. Yeah, of course it's your bad. Yeah, Who else is bad could it be? McManaway pressured. Weak side. Picks up a nice block by Preston. Rolls right. Throws down the sideline for Pomeroy. Did he get a foot in? No, out of bounds. Nice job by Pomeroy to the catch, but he couldn't get the, get the foot down, and it's going to bring up a long, long third down. Yeah, and Man McManaway didn't have the feet and the poise that he had. He was looking at about a seven-yard sack that time. But, boy, he can keep a play alive with his feet. Preston did a great job of sliding over from his back position. Now we get a toss to Preston on third down. Preston cuts it back. He's corralled there by the Cheshire defense and dropped for a loss of a yard. And NFA is going to be punting out of their own end zone. That was one of those third and longs. Let's play it safe and try to make sure our defense gets a hold. I'm not too sure that's a, the right play call there by the NFA Wildcats, Casey, because it looks like right now they're going to give Cheshire the ball back on their own side of the field. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going for the first down here because with, with a pass. Because I'm going to let throw it. My quarterback's my best player. And I, I want to keep the ball away from this Cheshire offense. This Cheshire offense has been wearing me out. I just held, now that my defense is right back on the field again. Yep. Uh, but I'm not going to question the play calling uh, because, you know, he, Jason Bakulis knows his team better than I do. So Parker from his own end zone. Nice high spiraling kick. Fair catch called for by Jeffrey at his NFA's 42-yard line. So great field position at the 42 of NFA for the Rams of Cheshire. Well, it's a hot night here, too, at NFA. Muggy, I mean, you got to think that, you know, talk the bottom with Mike at halftime, Case. You know, which front line is going to wear out first? Will it be NFA's uh, defensive line? Will it be Cheshire's defensive line? Uh, you know, I think maybe the fittest team today uh, may have a shot to win here in the second half, but it's hot. Well, this is where these uh, teams differ, these double L teams. Because if you had a kid like Zebarth, he was playing, he's playing both ways. Yeah. But when you get to a double L school, he's an mm -hmm. offensive lineman. He doesn't yeah. have to play on the other side of the ball. And that's where these teams, it's how many guys can you can you get away with? Keep fresh. Keep fresh, yeah. exactly. Reba from the shotgun stands at NFA's 45. Hands the ball off to McAlinden, straight up the middle for a nice gain off of left tackle. Jake McAlinden will have about five on first down. And then you see the offensive line surge. McAlinden was six yards deep and into the second level before he was even touched. The offense, the big people, 58 and 72 in the center, you know, making some holes and north-south running style for McAlinden there. Casey, good gain on first down of seven. And as his parents reminded me at halftime, hey, he's only a sophomore. Hey, don't, yeah. So good the big things. in front of us all hey, game long. Things huh? ahead for this young man. Fake the handoff. Now deep down the sideline, looking for Jeffrey or, and it's going to be intercepted in the end zone.
by Parker. Elijah Parker takes it out of the end zone to the 15 yard line. And I think both Angelone and Jeffrey thought they had that ball. It bounced off of Angelone and Elijah Parker intercepts in the end zone. A big defensive hold for the Wildcats. Yeah, we saw the tip ball earlier from NFA lead to a Cheshire touchdown and pick six, Casey. Well, you know what? NFA is gonna return the favor. Tip ball, two guys running the same route. Heads up play that time, picked off by the Wildcats. A huge, huge play for the defense. As my spotter, the junior voice told me, that bounced off his head. <laughs> That's a heads up play, but not in the right direction. But again, 13 yard line, Parker would have been better served staying in the end zone. NFA, NFA backed up here where he they was, started their lead at last drive. He was, he was thinking 108 yard pick six. McManaway gonna throw, has time. A little in route, and he has his man Pomeroy, a gain of perhaps oh, five incomplete. Pomeroy dropped it, and that has been a problem tonight. Uh, Pomeroy has struggled tonight uh, with that. Kevin Pomeroy, uh, the Pomeroy name, of course, Chris Pomeroy, great athlete in the area, but in his son, you know, they're doing well, good job tonight, but uh, gotta hold on to that ball. Find a way to get time back in the mix here. He's your home run hitter on offense. Find, find a way to get number three to the rock. Second and 10, NFA not burning any clock, not getting any yards. McManaway on a keeper, straight off a right tackle, and we're gonna get a hold out there on the edge. And that's not gonna be, a, that's not gonna be good for the Wildcats, because they are already deep in their own territory. Right now, the NFA offense uh, sputtering, spinning its wheels a little bit. You know, the, the ability to, yeah, there's a hold against NFA, Casey. We'll back them up probably halfway to the goal line. Yeah, that's gonna take them deep inside their own territory. And that's one of the problems, the, this hurry up, fast paced offense that NFA is running is very good when you're out in the middle of the field. But when you're back deep, that's yeah. like you might burn 30 seconds off the clock and you gotta kick the ball away. And that's, you know, that defense for NFA doesn't wanna get back on the field already. Now yeah. you do, you put a lot of pressure on your defense, no doubt about it. So we're gonna have second down and 16 from their own seven yard line. Hamlin is the lone setback. Twin receivers on both sides of McManaway. McManaway surveying, toss right to Hamlin, and he's tripped up. Great job, the defensive end of Cheshire in the backfield. That's Connor Whalen. He has been in the backfield all night long. The big 6 6 defensive end tripped up Hamlin for no gain, maybe a loss. It's going to be third and 16. Yeah, the field position and down in distance are dictating now the Cheshire defense just tee off on this NFA offense. Very, very predictable right now in this position are the Wildcats. Timeout, Cheshire, they want to set up. The last thing they want is to give up a big play with like NFA did earlier uh, to them. So they want to try to set this up. You know, you're talking about you know one unit helping out another. The defense is now picking up the offense. The offense through the pick, six, uh, the pick in the end zone. The defense says, okay, no problem. We got your back. And as an athlete and sports doctor, you certainly know this. There is nothing better uh, than the feeling you get when you're able to pick up a teammate, yeah. when you're able to do that. And if you're the guy that, you know, made the mistake, oh, there's nothing better when your team, you got teammate picked yeah. up. Yeah. The whole unit's picking them up right now. I mean, there's a host of Cheshire guys down there making plays. Defense right now for the Rams playing with a lot of confidence. Now, did I hear you say you think Louisville is going to upset Clemson? Yeah, I do. I, I think Louisville will have the best player on the field you tomorrow. Like, you like the quarterback. I like the quarterback a lot. He, you know, he, he, why not? Why not? He won the Heisman Trophy last year. Uh, I think he's the best player on the field tomorrow. I mean, will he have the best unit? Though offensively, I don't know, but I think he's the best player on the field tomorrow. I like that. Third and 20 from the three. McManaway going to throw. Looking for Briggs. Lofts it up, and the big tight end comes down with it. Where are they going to mark it? It's going to be a first down NFA. What a throw by Shea McManaway to his tight end, Tyler Briggs, on the sideline. They needed 20, they got 22. Yeah, that's the confidence of the coaching staff and the senior quarterback, cool hand Luke, Shane McManaway. Quick little hitch to Mulkin time. That'll gain about five yards on first down. That's a play we see Cheshire run, a little quick hitch out yeah. to the wideout. Chains are moving, and NFA rush into the football. Second and four, McManaway. Straight drop, looks to throw again. Hits Briggs again, another first down as he dives for the marker on the left sideline. So now Tyler Briggs getting into the action here for NFA as they're moving the chains out from their own end. Huge confidence builder, third and long. What a big time play by the NFA team. McManaway, hitch and go. Deep down the sideline, throws in the double coverage for Mulkintyne and it's incomplete. 
Yeah, he wasn't fooling the safety that time. He tried to look him off. Like I said, a double pump, hitch and go. Malkin time down the left side. Ball was slightly overthrown, and a good reason, too. There was double coverage that time. Yeah, I think that was a case where if he didn't mean to overthrow it, it's a good thing that he did. And we're gonna and we're gonna get a flag on the sideline of NFA. That's Jason Bakula. This is extremely hot right now that he did not get a pass interference call down there. Uh, he is hot. I, I gotta be honest with you. I thought if you're gonna get a pass interference call, I thought they could have gotten Mulkintine for pushing off on the play. But that is a first-year head coach with a penalty that his team does not need. Well, I mean, how much of that is him sticking up for his squad? How much is that frustration? How much of that is him telling the refs that we belong here with the big boys? Is uh, we deserve a hometown call? Yeah, you're not buying that. Not down 11 points with your offense moving the football. Now you're going to be back again. I, I think you got. I mean, listen, maybe he got. Maybe he thought he was will. You know, still within his limit there. Yeah, and, I get you know, it. He's not. McManaway going to throw, has time, throws over the middle. In stride, he hits Pomeroy, crosses the 40-yard line. They're going to say he's down at the 42. That's going to be shy of the first down, but he's close. Nice job by Kevin Pomeroy on a crossing route. McManaway hit him in stride. Yeah, he picked up 21 yards, needed 25, Casey. It is third down and five here for the Wildcats. Nice job by Pomeroy. Third and five, McManaway, straight drop. Fakes the out route, out inside, hits Mulkentine, across his midfield. And Mulkentine will have NFA a first down in Cheshire territory. And NFA looking for a rough in the passer on Shane McManaway as he got drilled after he released the ball. But what did I tell you? I'd like to see number three back in the mix. And here he is. They're backing up the chains here, going to get set down where the first down is. They're backing up to the 45. They're saying illegal man downfield against NFA. Wow. That negates wow. a huge first down. I don't know. I didn't, I I know, didn't I see that. That was a quick little hitch and go. That's going to back them. Formation the illegal Wildcats. formation against the Wildcats. Illegal, illegal formation illegal backs them up. Field. So it maxed them to the 40-yard line. So now we're going to have third and eight from the 40-yard line. That negates a big first down by NFA. McManaway, pressured, rolls right. Steps up, and he's going to be sacked at the 40-yard line. It technically won't be a snack, sack because he got past the line of scrimmage, but it's going to bring up fourth down from their 40-yard line, and F.A. is going to have to punt it away. The coverage sack that time by the Rams, uh, Casey. Uh, McManaway was looking downfield, looking downfield, but now we get another flag on the field, and it looks like offsides. Holding. Holding. Defensive holding. Here's your coverage sack. <laughs> now, I want to ask a question, sports doctor. I can't keep up. Is that a makeup call right there? Is no, that uh, 100%. 100%. Was that, was that one of those, you know what, we can't do that? Yeah. So we're going to. 100%. Right. Right. Yeah. That's your. There you go, coach. Simmer down. All right. There you go, coach. You, you got your call. Simmer down. First and 10, ball right at midfield. 28 17, Cheshire on top. NFA driving. McManaway looks to throw. Pressured. Stepped up. Goes to the outside. He's going to keep it. He's got some room. McManaway gets a block. Cuts it back inside. McManaway between the hashes. All the way down inside the 20 yard line to the 10 yard line. Big run by Shea McManaway. Yeah, McManaway was looking left, looking left, looking left the entire time. Tucked it, ran right, and found a lot of real estate. Casey, 31 yards on the quarterback keeper. First and 10. NFA rushes up to the football. Clock runs. McManaway hands off up the middle to Hamlin. Hamlin off a left tackle, breaks a tackle, and surges forward for about six yards on first down. Now this NFA offense is in rhythm. They're throwing it a little bit. They're running a little bit. Showing you a lot of diversity. McManaway out pattern. It goes Pomeroy wide open. Touchdown, Wildcats. Kevin Pomeroy was uncovered in the flat, and McManaway found him. And a huge touchdown drive that time, Casey, for NFA. Coming off the interception in the end zone. Great, great play that time by Shane McManaway. Finally, finally connecting with Pomeroy. Well, Cheshire has done a great job since in that early run by McManaway of keeping him in the pocket and not letting him yep. get outside. Snap is up, hold is up, and the kick is wide left. 28-23, Cheshire on top. They've done a great job of keeping him in the pocket, but that time they let him escape outside and he burned him. Yeah, he, he was looking left the whole time, Casey, and like you said, 
you know, protection broke down. He took it out the right side, got some good downfield blocking from his wide receivers. And I'm telling you, Shea McManaway is faster than you think. He can make plays with his feet. So the big defensive end, Connor Whalen, who's been in the backfield all night long, he's collapsing on one side, but they've got their second guy stunting inside. They're not letting, Mc, they're not letting McManaway get straight up the middle or outside of these ends who are coming in wide. And that time, there was just a breakdown, and he had that little seam. And every time they've given him that gap, he has really shown his athleticism, and he's a much better runner with the football than you would think. Yeah, and in that formation, Casey, you called trips to the left, one-man pass pattern on the right. The guy, the receiver on the right hand side of the field clears out a lot of real estate, and once he gets into the second level, if he gets a downfield block, he's, he's free for about 30 yards. And he did get that downfield block. NFA capitalizes. Let's find out if the extra point comes back to hurt him. 28-23. we got a football game here. Yeah, Cheshire on top with 5.05 remaining and the ball. Now if you're NFA, that defense has to get back out there and pick up your offense. Yeah, we got a football game. This is, um, I mean, nobody's going home here. I can tell you that right now. This is going to be a you know, last possession type of football game. Parker's going to kick off. Ball snapped. Jeffrey's going to take it at his own 15-yard line. Heads up the middle of the field, has a block, crosses the 30 to the 35, dives forward to about the 37-yard line where Cheshire will set up shop. First and 10 with 4.58 remaining, 28-23. As always here on game day, pay attention Monday night into Tuesday for Wired Zone, only on theday.com, on Facebook, at Connecticut Game Day, Connecticut Sports, where you'll be able to see full highlights, of course, Coach Jason McCoolitz mic'd up on the sidelines for NFA. You'll have full highlight packages at the end of this on Tuesday. Let's see if that NFA defense here, Casey, can answer the bell here with under, just under five minutes left to go in the third quarter. Reba from the shotgun. Reba hands the ball off. McAlinden. McAlinden off left end. McAlinden's in the open. McAlinden only has to beat Parker. Parker down the sideline. McAlinden outraces Elijah Parker for a touchdown. Cheshire Rams. Jake McAlinden is faster than you think. 64 yards on the touchdown score. His third of the year. Jake McAlinden. Wow, what an answer by the Rams. Just like that. Casey, they've been working that left side. The offense has been working that left side, and that time it paid off. Big dividends. And I promise you, Elijah Parker is not used to getting beaten. He thought he had the angle, and McAlinden, like a little jet, turned on the extra gear and put it in overdrive. 34-23, the Rams answer. Extra point by Bronson is good. 35-23, and it seems like every time, it's like Rocky Apollo, every time someone lands a punch, they come right back and land one the other way. I hope you got the over in this game. Well, right now, right now I'm <laughs> hoping I have my voice when this thing is over. <laughs> what a big time game. Big time players stepping up, that left side of that offensive line for Cheshire really paving the way that time for McAlinden. Casey, he wasn't even touched. He got into the second level, he turned on the jet switch, he hit the sidelines, and he was gone. Gone. Jake McAlinden, and I'll tell you, he's just faster than you think. I mean, re I really thought Parker was going to be able to catch him easily, and instead, McAlinden, a little afterburners, a little nos. You're in mid-season form. Look at you, a little lad around the forehead. We at Legend High School. A little fast and the furious. You're in the gym right now? Got a ball game here. I know, I, don't, I, should, I, didn't bring, I didn't think to bring the towel. Yeah. Back. It's too thought, early for the towel. I thought we were outside. I was gonna. Woo. You got any other scores for us? You know, what, come on. You, you gonna help me out here? Yeah, or it was 14 14 Fitch and um, uh, Notre Dame at half. That's a nice oh, late in the third, I'm sorry. And London was getting pounded. Yeah, Massachusetts. They were good. down 21 0. Yeah, Massachusetts yeah, good. Yeah, Massachusetts good. good. Parkers are back deep. Bronson's gonna kick it off at his own 40 for Cheshire. Let's see how NFA responds to the McAlinden touchdown. Low spinning squib kick, bounces, where Caleb Parker takes it at his 20. Gets a block, slips up the middle, crosses the 30 to the 35, and that's where NFA will set up shop. Are you a current or former athlete looking to earn over $100,000 a year? Well, if the answer is yes, contact Family First Life at 860-317-1324. Family First Life at 860-317-1324. Sean Mike, mic'd up. As your guy. 
NFA going to have their first, their next possession after the big touchdown by Cheshire. First and ten from their 35. McMahon away in the shotgun. McMahon away, hands the ball straight up the middle to Preston. Preston has a big hold. Preston has a first down, almost to midfield. Sean Preston took it off a right tackle, cut it to the outside, and got a first down for the Wildcats. Yeah, and the freshman finished that run, too, with a fury. He stuck his head down, got an extra two yards. Hard to believe he's only a freshman. Got a lot of young kids. Mulkentine's a sophomore. Yep. Hamlin's a sophomore. Preston's a freshman. A year away, I'm telling you. But Outside that, of the quarterback. But the quarterback's a senior. McMahon away, going to throw. Out in the flat, it goes to Mulkentine. Mulkentine slips a tackle, cuts it back inside, gains about eight yards on a little bubble screen. And a nice job by uh, Mulkentine that time, Casey. No dancing around. He catches the ball. He turns up field. He goes north-south in a play that could have gone for two yards, went for seven. I like the way Mulkentine runs with the ball in the open field. Elijah Parker, only a junior. He'll be back as well. I like Mulkentine, too. Handoff. Fake up, up the middle, Preston, Preston, big hole, spins left for a first down off a left tackle. Preston right on the left hash goes Sean Preston and NFA moving the chains. First down, NFA. First down, NFA, ball on the 35-yard line of Cheshire. McMahon away, going to throw. Out in the flat it goes, and he out throws Pomroy. A little bit too long for the receiver, and it'll be finally a chance to catch your breath. NFA doesn't want you to catch your breath. Now next Boy, week, quick to the point. Next week, join us on game day. We're going to have something a little special for you next week after NFA runs this play, or maybe four plays. We'll talk a little bit about that. McMahon away from the shotgun. Fakes the hand off to Preston, keeps it himself. McMahon away, gets outside, beats a Scoto to the outside, and gets over the 30-yard line. And they'll mark him out right on the 30-yard line, so that'll be a gain of about four yards. Next week, game day, we'll be bringing you the matchup we're going to call it the Emory Bowl. It's Fitch and Montville, and the sports doctor will be in the play-by-play -play chair with Mike Emery, former coach of both Montville and Fitch. A lot, of, a lot of storytelling with the coach next week, that's, that's for sure. It's going to be a good time. I'll be, You'll be I'll, in, uh, I'll Missouri. in Nashville. I'll be in Nashville, yeah. I'll be in Nashville. I'll tell you why in a second. I, I'm going to ask you why. I'm going to get into that. McMahon away. Fakes the toss, now rolls left, looking for Mulkentine. Has time, deep over the middle, he's got Sproul, and he drops the ball at the goal line. Jaheim Sproul had it in his hands, and he dropped it. What a throw by McMahon away. Sproul was there, came all the way across the formation, across the field. McMahon away was looking left the whole time, and Mulkentine looked him off, went down the middle. Sproul would like to have that one back, Casey. Big fourth down now, fourth and six from the 30. NFA would have been in on the goal line, but instead, fourth and six from the 30. Here you go, got to pick him up now. You got to pick Sproul up. In motion, Mulkentine, McMahon away. Has time, now he's pressured. Rolls away from pressure, throws, and it's incomplete, and Cheshire holds. Great pressure by Whalen, chasing down McMahon away. And the Cheshire Rams have held. That lost opportunity on third down made you a tough play on fourth down. NFA cannot convert. Cheshire takes over on downs, Casey. Now, next week you'll be in Nashville, and rumor has it you'll be playing, performing, on the same stage as Justin Timberlake. Uh, yes, well, so Steve Elsie and friends are, have been invited to the Pilgrimage Music Festival, so uh, me and... Uh, the Supergirl Michelle and the Junior Voice of Game Day will be down with Steve Elsie and friends at the Pilgrimage Music Festival hosted uh, by Justin Timberlake down outside of Nashville in, in Franklin and uh, Eddie Vedder walking on the moon uh, and a whole bunch of groups that my wife and my son know that I don't because I don't listen to anything but sports talk. <laughs> Reba first down from the shotgun. Hands the ball off to McAlinden. McAlinden wrestling with Dougie Moore. And he'll be wrestled to the ground after a gain of two off a right tackle. McAlinden, not that time. Down two scores right now. NFA needs to toughen up and get a defensive stop with just under three minutes to go in a slow moving third quarter here at the Academy. Second and eight, ball at the Cheshire 32 yard line. Reba barking out signals. He has McAlinden in the backfield standing to his right. His Jeffrey wide left, Angelone wide right. Reba fakes the throw, little slant, has a complete to Angelone, move the chains. Nice job that time uh, by Angelone on the slant route. Oh, he hits Angelone in stride, and Angelone off to the races on that play. We've seen that play before. 
just a little bit quick on that throw, or that had been six points for number six. Quick to the ball are the Rams. Big first down, 225 remaining here in the third quarter. Cheshire on top, 35-23. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Case. Reba barking signals, fakes the handoff, throws on a screen over the head of Jeffrey and out of bounds. Airmail, that one did Reba. Reba's had himself in a bit of a rhythm here in the second half. He's connected on three out of his last four throws. That was his first incompletion in his last four throws. You know, the Rams have played much of this game without Elijah Alston, their leading rusher, but Jake McAlinden has not only done the yeoman's work, he has been a bit of a rock star here tonight. The sophomore with three touchdowns has really shouldered the load in Alston's absence. Second and 10, Reba hands the ball off. Escada has it, gets about seven yards off a right tackle before he's brought down by Dougie Moore and company, and it'll be a third and short for Cheshire now into NFA territory. Yeah, a nice job that time by Escada corralling in, almost a missed handoff by Rabe that time, taking the head and getting himself a tough, tough between the tackles, seven yards. Third and, third down and about three. Rabe from the shotgun. Hands the ball off to McAlinden. McAlinden falls forward, looks like he's close to a first down. Big front, front, big push and a big surge by that offensive line. Get on the left side of it, stick your head down for number 43 and move the sticks. First down Cheshire, big run that time on third and short. This is where the biggins up front start to earn their keep. This is where you play keep away. Now Cheshire, that fast paced offense wants to grind out clock. They would like to keep this ball through the end of this quarter. Yeah, and what NFA needs to do, Casey, is start Cheshire off in a losing, you know, it's put them in a second down and 12. Put them down in a second down and you know, 13 or 14. Make a negative play for the Cheshire offense. Trips right for Cheshire. Reba hands off to Escada, and he's wrestled down very quickly. Nice job that time by the NFA defense. Big Mark Thaluzma, uh, the defensive lineman, wrestles him down for no gain. Yeah, well, there you go. There's your start. Second down and 10. You know, make them be in an uncomfortable down and distance position. Faluzma that time shot awesome. off from his tackle position second and did a nice job seven. getting to Escada before he could get into the second level because that's where the money has been for Cheshire's when they've gotten in through the linebackers. They've yep. really made hay. Second level. Second down and 11, 33 seconds remaining. Reba hands the ball off straight up the middle. Again, it goes to Escada and he gets past the line of scrimmage and now gains about five more. So it's going to bring up third and long. And with 20 seconds remaining, let's see if Cheshire wants to get off a play before the end of the third period. Yeah, you know, I don't think so. Cheshire will milk this thing right down. And Scott has really given them a nice lift off the bench, Casey, coming in for Allstott. You know, he's, he's done a nice job. He's a bit of an upright runner, but a strong base north-south puts his head down. And he's done a very good job since he came in his ballgame. Yeah, so losing Alston didn't really slow them down between McAlinden and Escada. They've got still got that two-headed running back yeah. going. Game day is brought to you by Family First Life. Family First Life is a team environment, hiring many current and former athletes because they understand competitiveness and teamwork. If you are looking for part-time or full-time work, apply online at familyfirstlife.com. Fourth quarter time here at NFA, the home Wildcats trail. The fifth ranked Cheshire Rams, 35 to 23. Cheshire with the football, big third and six from the NFA 38 yard line. Casey O'Neill, along with the sports doctor, Keith O'Brien, and you are listening to Game Day, live on theday.com and on Facebook at Game Day Connecticut Sports. Yeah, I mean, big time atmosphere for Friday Night Football, Casey. The bleachers are both packed. I know as we were both walking through the crowd at halftime, there's people everywhere, all along the outside here, the railing. And, this is, a, this is a nice place to see a game. And again, we talked about, you know, Friday night lights with families and kids and people and, and something to do. Well, this is something to do on a Friday night here in North Connecticut. Well, they've got a lot of folks out here, and this has been as entertaining a game as you could ask for. And I think what you've learned uh, tonight about NFA is they can play, certainly on the offensive end, right. with anybody. Uh, defensively, they're hanging in there, but the difference in this game has been mistakes, and the veteran team, the experienced team, the team that plays in the big-time conference, the team that's ranked fifth, has capitalized on those mistakes, and they have a 12-point lead and the football, a big third and six here to start the fourth quarter. Reba 
from the shotgun. Low snap. He corrals it, rolls right, wants Jeffrey. Instead, throws deep down the sideline. Has a man, and it's incomplete. Down just inside the goal line. And that was Waylon, the big defensive end, who came in on the, on the receiver and ran a nice route to the corner, the pylon, incomplete. Yeah, one-man pass pattern that time for Cheshire. Raven was looking deep the whole way, Casey. Threw it up there for grabs. The big tight end cannot come down with it. A huge stop for this NFA defense on fourth down. And we're going to have Bronson in the game, stands at his own 45-yard line. Let's find out. They've done a nice job of pinning NFA back. Let's see how he does with this punt. Parker is back deep, standing at his own five. Snap is good. Bronson with plenty of time. Punts it up high. It's spiraling. They're going to see which way it bounces. It takes a sideways bounce. And Parker tries to fall and pick it up. He loses it. He falls on it. Ball loose. Huge mistake. Did NFA recover? Looks like he did He did fall on the ball wow. with the Wildcats, but man, Elijah, uh, uh, Caleb Parker has had a couple of uh, adventures tonight in the punting game. Yeah, I mean, I think special teams thus far has been a weak point for NFA. I mean, they've given up some big returns on kickoffs. Uh, you know, Parker, you know, boy, he's, some of the coaches down there wiping the sweat off their bra right now just scratching their heads. But a terrible field position again for NFA at their own 10-yard line. First and 10 from the 10. McManaway has trips right, wants to throw, rolls right, steps up, pressure. Now he's going to take off, keeps it, goes around left end, cuts it back inside, down the sideline, and a first down. McManaway up to the 25-yard line. That was the Shea McManaway show right there. Yeah, Shea McManaway making things happen with his feet. Casey Cat, the pass patterns broke down, stepped up, took it off the left side, and got NFA a well-needed 15 yards. McMahon away, quick to the line. Now he wants to throw. Hitch and go. Zips it over the middle. Caught by Mulkentine. Breaks a tackle. Mulkentine right on the left hatch. Crosses the 35 to the 36. And the chains will move. Yeah, and, and, and the best attribute for Mulkentine thus far, Casey, too, is making himself available to his quarterback. Turning, giving him a big target. And as soon as he catches it, boom, north-south upfield. McMahon away to pass. Plenty of time. No one there. Now he steps up again, holds the ball like a loaf of bread, and he will be sacked. Lucky to be able to hold on to that one. Brought down by the big defensive tackle, number 72, Daniel Koval, who also plays on the offensive side of things. McMahon, we are looking for Sproul down the right-hand side, well covered on the play. Coverage sack again by the Cheshire secondary. He did get back to the line of scrimmage, so second and 10 from their own 36-yard line. McManaway's got twin receivers right and twin receivers left. Wants to throw. Now he rolls right, being chased. McManaway, pressure from the backside, and he's just going to throw it away. And then a pop out of bounds. Uh, no flag over there? Preston, he got hammered. Pass intended for Preston, incomplete. Wow. Uh, bring up a third big down. third down. Now they're letting him play out there tonight. We have third seen very down. few flags uh, for anything physical. This has been a very well-played game from the tackling standpoint, and the officials are letting him go. Third and 10 NFA, ball at the 36-yard line. McManaway has Preston to his right and twin receivers on either side. McManaway in the pocket, pressured. McManaway slips a tackle. McManaway throws, finds Mulkentine at midfield. Late flag is going to kill NFA. McManaway. Broke away from Koval. How did he do it? He found Mulkentine, but it looks like it's all going to come back. Yeah. Holding against NFA. Houdini act that time by Shane McMahon away. Like I said, the play will be negated by holding. Wow. Tough break that time for the Wildcats. McMahon away eluded the sack, spun out, found Mulkentine in the middle of the field for a big first down, but instead... It's going to bring up third and a very long, perhaps as long as 20 after they back the chains up. Third and 20 from the 26-yard line. Ah, the 20 yards, they got it once before. Let's see what they have in their bag of tricks now. McMahon away, drops. Deep down the sideline, he has Mulkentine at midfield and incomplete. Great job on the defensive side by Cheshire. Knocks the ball away. That was Jeffrey. And there's a flag on the play as well. Let's see what that call is. Might be a little chippiness here on Mulkentine. You get the official signal here. 
Malkentine had the ball in his hands at the 50, but Jeffrey did a great job hitting him as he caught the ball, knocking it loose. Incomplete. And we have a dead ball foul against Cheshire. Against the sidelines, it looks like. Is that, is that what that is, a sideline warning? or I believe so. Maybe the sidelines come. I bet you it's coming out onto the field. That's a warning. Yeah, it's a warning. Yeah. Coming out onto the field probably because the play was right on their sideline. Warning, either way, NFA is going to have to punt. Now, you know, it's strange. We talked about double L schools. In most places, a kid of, as talented as McManaway would have to play on both sides of the ball. Yeah. But, they're, you know, it's a luxury to be able to have these kids play only the quarterback position because he, I mean, he, can, he could probably be a really good defensive back, too. Oh, he's fast enough. There's no, he's tough enough as well. Absolutely. Parker back deep to punt for NFA. Snap is good. High spiraling punt over the head of Angelone, who fair catches it at the 32-yard line. So now under 10 minutes, 9.56 remaining. NFA needs to limit the amount of first downs they give up here. they got to get the ball back because they are down two scores. Yeah, and I'm going to look for Cheshire to take the air out of the ball a little bit with this possession. Rely on that big Cheshire. people up front, run the football, and move the sticks. I don't think the Rams are in any kind of rush right now when it could, they come to the line offensively. No, they're going to they're going to start running the ball off left tackle two times, give themselves an opportunity. The one thing that Cheshire does really well, though, is they have the ability to throw that little quick in route to Jeffrey that acts like a pass. It's a very high percentage play, uh, which they, they've run on a couple of occasions, especially on first down. Are they going to do that, or are they going to try to set NFA up for the dagger? Nah, I get the big people in the backfield. I think they're just going to run them down. Pistol formation. Reba. Ball on the turf. Picked up. So McAlinden lost the ball, but of course the bounce came right up to him. That's twice on broken plays. McAlinden's been in the right spot, and he loses maybe half a yard, but disaster averted for the Rams. Rams got the break, got the bounce that time. McAlinden covered up. Second down, 11, Casey. Second down and 11, 33-yard line. Maybe the break the NFA defense needed with negative yards was on a misplay. Could be, but that would have been a lot better if it had been a fumble recovery yeah. if you're Coach Pakulis. Reba, under center this time. Power eye formation. He's looking to draw him off. Hands the ball off to Escoto. Escoto cuts it off left tackle, off right tackle, cuts it back inside and gains maybe three. Good backside pursuit that time by NFA on a bit of a off tackle play by Cheshire. Yeah, 10 guys in the box I counted that time for the Wildcats, Casey. They're bringing everybody up to the line of scrimmage. Linebackers, corners, safeties, everybody's in the box to try to stop the run. Third and 10, maybe 10 and a half. Cheshire sends trip receivers to the left. Sole receiver right. Reba gonna throw. Straight drop, throws a little screen to Escoda. Escoda slips and falls forward close to the first down, stays on his feet and gets enough for the first down up to the 45 yard line. What an individual effort by Escoda. Paul Escoda. Great play call that time by the Cheshire Rams. First time we've seen that screen to the running back coming out of the backfield on the right hand side. Caught the ball, Casey. And he got the last five yards all on heart and will. Well, he slipped, which allowed NFA to, pers to the pursuit to get him, but he would not go down, and he stayed on his feet somehow, got the extra five yards. Great individual effort by Colascoto. Reba from the shotgun. Hands the ball off to McAlinden. McAlinden off of the right edge. Cuts it back inside. Multiple flags. McAlinden's in the open. He's at the 30, the 20, the 10. Touchdown, NFA, but there's flags all over the field, and I believe this one is coming back. That's going to be a hold on that entire right-hand side of the defense, offensive line. Holding. Defensive Jake. players for NFA stopped once they saw the flags coming up. Jake McAlinden had his fourth touchdown of the game. I would venture to say maybe not since he was in, you know, micros has he had a four-touchdown, 200-yard game. But that one's going to come back because of holding on the right side of the Cheshire line. Speaking of Mike Rose, the junior voice of game day, has a game in Putnam on Sunday. <laughs> That's a long ride. Putnam. You know how to get there? I don't have to. I'm going to, I'll be at the yard oh, field playing yeah. an all-star game. 
Handoff straight up the middle. Escoda wrapped up quickly by the NFA line. Loss of half a yard. It's going to bring up second down and 21 after the penalty and the loss. Yeah, so NFA is down by two scores right now, Casey, and time is not yet a big factor in this ball game. The way the offense can move, but you know you're under eight minutes. You're about seven and a half minutes to go here. Second down and 18. Now holding penalty may have opened the door here for NFA to get the ball back with decent time to get their offense a chance. Reba from the shotgun, Fake, hands the ball off, fakes it to Escoto, takes it out of stomach, down the sideline for Angelone, well defended, great job out on the edge, NFA, Kenyatta Peak, the junior defensive back was one on one with Angelone and made a play. Yeah, Angelone with a one man route, Peak was out there on an island and he said, not on my watch, great defensive one on one play. It's gonna bring up a huge third down and let's uh, call it 18 for this NFA defense. Third and 18 from their own 37 yard line. Angelone was open. That was the shot we were talking about, the dagger shot by Cheshire. One man route that time. The peak had a great, had coverage, got his hand up, knocked it away. Third and 18, Reba, straight drop, wants to throw. Pressure, feels it, rolls right, throws on the side, and has his man out in the flat, but well short of the first down. That's only gonna get up to the line of scrimmage. So a safe pattern out there to Tommy Nyuk. But Winuk did not have enough and back to the original line of scrimmage. And Bronson will be on to kick the punt. Fourth and 11, Cheshire, he'll kick it from his own about 30 yard line. And Parker's back at his own 20. Yeah, well, hopefully Parker can have some good hands on this punt. Casey, the penalty right there really killed that drive for Cheshire and opened the door for Anna get the ball back with decent time left. Over, end over kick, lands at the 20, takes a great Cheshire bounce inside the 20 to the 15 yard line where it dies. I'll tell you, this kid is a heck of a punter because he does different things. Yeah. We've seen the high uh, booming kick, we've seen the end over end kick designed to get a bounce, we've seen him kick the dead ball that spins, he's done a little bit of everything. A little directional tail dragger that yeah. last time, yeah, he's got some skills. I mean, he's nobody punched the, Yeah, nobody punched to the coffin corner anymore, you notice that? It's, it's, it's a lost art, but uh, this kid certainly can know it. NFA first and 10 from their own 15, where's, 6.30 remaining. Where's Ray Guy when you need him, the old oh, Ray, coffin corner? Ray Guy knocked airplanes down when he punted though. He, 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 Reggie dang, Roby. Reggie Roby, yeah. there I know punter. sports. You do, I was sports talker. Obscure punters. <laughs> McMahon away to throw. Pressured. Steps up in the pressure. Still on his feet. Going to keep it. Heads to the sidelines. Has a first down and wisely gets out of bounds at about the 35-yard line. McManaway nice job by Shea McMahon away, escaping pressure and line. keeping the NFA drive alive. Yeah, and again, it's that senior leadership stepping up in the pocket and making plays with his feet. Deep pass pattern, so there's a lot of room underneath if he can get to that second level. McMahon away, hands off to Preston and nothing there. Check that, that's Hamlin. Still nothing there. It's gonna be second and eight. NFA quickly up on the ball, 6.09 remaining as they're down 35-23. I see Malkentine at the top of the formation, Casey, number three, we'll keep an eye on him for a big play. One on one with Jeffrey. Pressure again, McMahon away, steps up, avoids it, avoids another guy, but he will be sacked by the Cheshire Rams. Whalen from his defensive end position, along with multiple Cheshire defenders, and it's going to be third and long for NFA. And he's going to need some protection. He's got Sproul and Mulkentine running deep pass patterns, Casey. He's going to need time to set his feet, survey the field, and throw the ball. They are really coming for him from the edges. Third and six. This time he's got time, but the coverage is there. Now he's looking for somebody. Plenty of time. How there's going to be a penalty somewhere. He throws low to Sproul. And there's a flag from the back judge. Sproul caught it for what would be a first down, but let's see what the penalty is. It'd be an illegal lineman downfield. It's the only thing I can think of. He called that, the back judge called that? Yeah, so much time, it, so much time expired. And that's what it is, an illegal man downfield by NFA. Had to be, there was just so much time. He had, you know, he probably had, McManaway probably had it for 10 seconds. Yeah, the back judge threw the flag, which is kind of shocking. And that's right, but it had to have been, you know, that's how far downfield got. Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to back NFA up. It's going to make it third and probably 11. Yep, exactly what it is. From the 34-yard line now. Big play here as we're at 520 remaining, and people are starting to walk in the direction of the exits. 
He had 15 seconds to throw the ball that time. He did have a lot of time. <laughs> McMahon away. Again, they're in the zone. He has plenty of time. Deep over the middle of the field. No one there. And it's tipped by Angelone incomplete. He was looking for Pomeroy. McManaway had all kinds of time because Cheshire is in a big cover zone. And I think NFA is entertaining thoughts of going for it on fourth down, Casey. 5-0-5 left to go in this ball game. They're down two scores. I think if they give the ball back to Cheshire right now, they may not see it back. So Jason McCool is going to roll the dice here on fourth down with his senior quarterback. McManaway, three-man rush for Cheshire. McManaway has Spruill complete at the 42-yard line. Jaheim Spruill with a nice catch on the sideline. Great throw by McManaway. Yeah, rolling the dice. He comes up 7-11. Well, how about 12 to Spruill? Nice pitch and catch that time. McManaway going to throw again. Out in the flat. Finds Briggs. Briggs at the 40-yard line. Wrestled down after a quick gain of three. NFA rushing to the ball. 445 remaining. 35-23, Wildcats trail the Rams of Cheshire. Preston is the setback, twin receivers on either side. Malkentine and Briggs left, Pomeroy and Spruill right. McManaway from the shotgun, and that play is gonna be offsides. The left side, the two receivers on the left, got a jump beforehand, and that'll back him up five yards. Yeah, Malkentine was out there, number three, he tried to get himself a few extra steps on a defender, inside step. Just want to get a little, you know. Before the ball help. is snapped. Get a little help. That's one of my moves. <laughs> that's why I say going deep on Justice Ferris. That's right. Ready, and set. He's already 10 yards down. Sports <laughs> Doctor, 10 yards away. <laughs> All right, Sports Doctor, we're, you go on one. We're going to go on four. Doesn't make me a bad guy, Casey. Doesn't make you a bad guy. McMahon away. Plenty of time. They're still in the zone. Out to Spruill. He's got it. Gain of, they got the penalty back plus about half more. It's going to bring up third down and... Let's call it seven. Inside outside pattern that time. Sproul underneath and Pomeroy going deep. Sproul at single coverage. Pomeroy double coverage to go underneath. McMahon away on third and seven. Pressured. Has lots of room. Steps up. Throws down the sideline. Has Briggs. Hits him in stride. Dives for the pylon. Waiting for the official signal. Touchdown NFA. Tyler Briggs on a beautiful throw from Shane McManaway. Yeah, well, it's a gambling and going for it. And fourth down pays off for NFA Casey as they score and cut this thing down to six points with 348. And outside of carrying water out to the tired people on the field, Shane McManaway has done everything asked in this ballgame by Coach Jason Bakulis. I hope the highlights of this game are seen around the state, and I hope the people from Cheshire appreciate <laughs> what a good player Shane McManaway is. He has had an incredible ball game. Now he's staying in the hold, bad snap, and that is gonna be no good. And that means a six point lead, which is interesting. Six points. Has <laughs> touched that six. Oh um. man, 35-29. Cheshire on top. Will NFA kick it off? Will they do the onside kick? What do you got here? Star I think Stockton? you kick it off. I mean, you got a lot of time left to get three timeouts, 348. I think you uh, I think you kick it off and play defense. Game day is brought to you by Family First Life. Are you a current or former athlete looking to earn over $100,000 a year? Well, if the answer is yes, contact Family First Life at 860-317-1324. What a great football game. Very entertaining. And I think at this point, Casey, there are no moral victories. No. I think NFA wants to win this ball game. Sure. And, you know, we're going to be down on the – you'll be down on the sideline. The sports doctor will talk with the winning coach of this game. And I know – I certainly, if it's Cheshire, I'd be very interested to hear about how Dan Druss, what he thinks about this trip down here tonight because... Uh, well, you talked to him the other night, and, and he, the first person he talked about was Shane McManaway. Yeah, he said that he was worried about the feet, did Don Drust, and he said that he was, you know, concerned about the legs, the arm, the decision-making. He said, I like their quarterback a lot. Well, guess what? The quarterback <laughs> certainly came to Could play. keep you up tonight, yeah, that's for sure. But if NFA can, can can find a way to pull a rabbit out of the hat, we will have Jason Bakulis as well. But the sports doctor will head down on the field after the game with the winning coach. And what a game it has been. 35-29 Cheshire on top. The fifth ranked team in the state over the game and fighting NFA Wildcats. Parker will kick the ball off from his own 40. Jeffrey is the lone deep back for Cheshire. Cheshire expecting an onside kick. They get a pooch kick instead, and a great job 
on the hands team by Cheshire. Will Grakowski, what a great job out there on the hands team. He caught the little floating pooch kick and with 3.45 remaining, right now Cheshire is looking for first downs and clock run. And we line that big offensive line to move the sticks, get some first downs. Big people up front, Casey. Big first down here for the NFA defense. They've got Mac, Jake McAlinden in the backfield along with Reba from the shotgun. Reba hands off to McAlinden. He cuts it right back off the left tackle over the center position and gains about four on first down. That's what the that's the four yards and cloud of dust right now. Jake McAlinden just needs to hold on to the ball and gain yards. Yeah, timeout called on the field. Looks like by Anna Fang. Well, this has been an entertaining ball game. I I, I got to be honest with you. It was uh, you know one of the games we looked on the schedule and we we saw Cheshire and NFA. Uh, we saw Cheshire open up last week and beat Shelton. NFA went on the road and beat Xavier. Uh, I think some of the people in the area were a little bit skeptical. Maybe that was a fluke, but I think not. I think NFA is legit. And the real deal. Well, we're going to give you full credit for this ball game, Sports Doctor. Mike DeMauro said at halftime, he said, I'm the idiot that wrote an email saying, no one wants to see NFA and Cheshire play. That's not going to be a game. But you were you were very, very uh, adamant. You said, you know what? It's not only is it Pakulis' first game, uh, home game, but you know what? It's a chance to do a game against a big-time team. And we have been rewarded, Sports Doctor, with a fine football game. Second and seven from the 37-yard line. Reba. Hands off again to McAlinden. McAlinden slips a tackle, and Elijah Parker trips him up right on the 40-yard line. So here's third down and about two for Cheshire, and NFA will call their second timeout. Yeah, I'm kind of shocked by that. I think you let the clock run there on third down. And if you stop, I'm sorry, if you stopped in there on third down, then you call timeout. And force the punt with no time. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little shocked. I think they're going to do the, I think they're just going to do the opposite and save that save the timeout, but if they don't stop them here, realistically, it's going to be, uh, you know, they'd have virtually no time to run a play. Yeah, and again, you know, the, the you know you got to give credit here to the offensive line for Cheshire, Casey, because there's not a lot of penetration. There's not a lot of guys, you know, just, you know, hitting those run gaps for NFA's defense. I mean, you know, the running backs are basically into the second level before they're touched and tackled. They're falling forward for three and four yards. Not a big push up front by the NFA big people. I think notice has been served to the rest of the ECC tonight, though, too. You better come prepared to play this NFA team. Yeah. This NFA team is a very good team. Now, they still have West Haven. They still have Windsor. Windsor yeah. I mean, Both teams in the top ten. Uh, it's going to be. I mean, there might be a chance for some real special events uh, this year with this NFA team. Third and three. Ball at the 41-yard line. Reba from the shotgun. Reba hands off to McAlinden. He breaks a tackle. Trying to get outside. Does, reaches for the first down, he's knocked out of bounds. It's all gonna be about the spot. I think he's short, but what an effort. And now we got a flag coming in. I think there's a late hit down there. McLennan earned those yards all on himself. He put his head down, got to the sidelines, got to the chains. And if this is 15 yards against NFA for a late hit, this is a backbreaker. I think that'll be all she wrote for the Wildcats, but we're gonna, they're gonna talk about it right now with the spot. I don't think McAlinden had it on his own, though he did an unbelievable effort to get close to the to the yard marker on his own. He had he broke two or three tackles and was hustling for the pylon for the for the uh, the chain. I, I see think they're picking up. Are they picking up the flag or are they calling this here? They're what, gonna call it. What is Joe Salamino? We're gonna have a call here. Yeah. That's gonna go in Santa Fe. That, that's 15 yards. That's gonna be a backbreaker with three and change left to go in this ball game. Late hit right down on the sideline, right in front of the official. So, I mean, there is that, but also right in front of the NFA bench. They're talking it over right now. Camera guy Carlos Vierhan was down there too. He almost got cleaned out. I, that means we should have a nice view a nice view of this on Tuesday. Hazard pay for Carlos. Absolutely. The officials now are huddling and they're explaining to the both teams what the call's gonna be. I mean, it's pretty much wraps things up for 15 yards and a first down with NFA only having one timeout if it is in fact an unsportsmanlike roughing the yeah, uh, late hit, yeah. Offsetting. Offsetting penalties, Wrapping dead ball, the block in the back and a unsportsmanlike late hit. 
Penalties offset. Dead ball, personal foul against the But that's a dead ball personal foul. First down. So that's an automatic foul. Are they going to back it? They're going to back it up 10 up and then give, give them the automatic first down. Give them the first down. Yep. So that's what's going exactly right. So they're going to take the 10 yards for the block in the back. They're going to mark that. And then they're going to turn around and go 15 yards in the other direction for the unsportsmanlike. And that's going to be a first down yeah. for Cheshire. And that's a, that's a backbreaker for this Wildcat team right there. That crosses uh, the 45 to the 47 yard line. First down Cheshire with 3.23 remaining. NFA only with one timeout. They're going to need a little bit of a miracle here to get the ball back with any sort of time. NFA's got the call on its defense to make some plays, and Cheshire's going to have to call on its offensive line to keep moving the ball downfield. They're going to have Jeffrey on wide left and Angelo on wide right. Both of them are going to be in single coverage, certainly, because everybody else is going to be devoted to stopping the run. Going to move the chains, 37-yard line. 323 remaining here in what has been a wild and entertaining football game. We thought we couldn't top last week for excitement. This one's been pretty close. How about the points we've seen in the first two weeks? Yeah, good season so far, Casey. Great, great, great for game day, wired zone, all the fans and the listeners out there. No shortage of footage to look at tonight. Reba from the shotgun has McAlinden as his lone set. Hands the ball off to McAlinden, has a block, straight up the middle, big hole for Jake McAlinden. He gets about five on first down. Yeah, and McAlinden is stepping through the offensive line case. He's not touched until he reaches the second level. And that's the sign of the offensive line wearing down NFA a little bit. Now there's the last time out by NFA with 3.15 remaining. So it's gonna be second down and six. And if NFA can stop them on back-to-back -back plays, they could get the ball back with just under two minutes remaining. But they need to stop them. One more first down and this ball game is over. The field, that was NFA doing a nice job out. representing the ECC tonight. Other remaining. ECC teams in action against big conference opponents. Fitch against Notre Dame of West Haven. And of course, New London up on the road against very highly ranked Massey. What, um, what are you looking forward to most next week when you go to Nashville? Uh, I mean, you're going to put yourself in the moment. Will you be in the moment? Yeah. Will you enjoy it? Yeah. I, if, if I get a chance to, now, allegedly, so this, this is hosted by Justin Timberlake. It's his. He's the producer, and he supposedly goes and he's pretty talented, do you? himself to all of the acts. If I meet Justin Timberlake, that, that'd be pretty good. Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Second and five from the 48. Reba barking signals. Hands the ball off to Mac Linden. To me, that's a Skoto. Skoto breaks a tackle, and it's going to be close. It's going to be third and a, maybe a yard. And I, you know, it's, at this part in the field, they don't get it here. You might, you might see them go up, but they're going to say. First down, but it would be four down in territory, yeah. Yeah, Skoto filled it in for Austin, doing a nice job here in the second half, Casey. He's a tough back as well. North-south runner, puts his head down, puts his body out there, number eight. Got six on that one. That's all he needed. NFA cannot stop the clock down under three minutes. They'd have to do three straight stops right here to get the ball back with any time left on the clock. Reba's under center, they're in the power eye. Reba hands the ball off to Escoto, hands right side off right tackle. Nice tackle made out there by Parker and that's gonna be after a gain of maybe two or three, second and seven, clock running with under 2.30 remaining. Ball spotted right on the 40 yard line. With the Rams in absolutely no rush. They'll take this thing down right to the edge. Second and seven, uh, excuse me, two minutes and 16 seconds remaining. Second and seven. 35 29, Cheshire trying to run out the clock with a six point lead. NFA desperate to have one more crack at this football. Try and get in there, knock a ball loose with a helmet. A little, you know, just, you know, pull something free. Reba, ball's loose. Reba looks like he falls on it. There was the break that NFA needed, <laughs> but Reba, he couldn't find the ball right away, located it, and dropped on it. But here comes a third down. It'll be third and 10, 140. They'll get this snap off with about 120 remaining. Boy, it's a second or third time we've seen a bad quarterback exchange. And, and you know, two or three times, Cheshire's got the bounce. They've got the break. 
I'm calling for a helmet to hit the ball and pop up, and the quarterback loses the exchange. 125 and counting. They'll get this playoff just under 120. They're gonna wind it down and call timeout, I think, Case. And they do with 117 remaining. So Cheshire. Cheshire can run this third and 10 play with 117 and then probably do the same thing, let it run down again and take the penalty before they let Bronson punt. Bron they, now whether they punt it or not will be interesting. Right, right. And I'm going to run the football here. I'm keeping the ball on the ground and, and I'm going to milk the clock. And, you know, you, like you said, and if they even pick up four or five yards here, Casey, why not go for it on fourth down? Well, you probably would go for it on fourth down, and uh, because the, the only thing you don't want to do is on a punt, you don't want to risk a blocked punt. Right. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what they do. You know, NFA is going to put 11 guys in the box here, Casey. Stop the run, stuff the line of scrimmage, probably try and force a fumble, go helmet on the ball, that type of hit. You know, but if Cheshire can pick up four or five yards here, uh, they could easily go for it on fourth down. I'm not saying to do that. Smart thing would be run it down, but. Five yards here gives the Rams at least some options. Yeah, the junior voice of game day in his best Lee Corso just said, the way McAlinden's been running the football, you give it to McAlinden and you get out of the way. It's pretty smart. <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's not bad. McAlinden is in the backfield. Power eye, third and 10. One seventeen remaining. Reba under center. Reba hands off to McAlinden. He cuts it back up the middle. Jump step and skipped. Gets back just over the line of scrimmage. So. NFA should get the football back. It's fourth and six. The question is, are they going to run it on fourth down? Are they going to punt it, which I don't think they will? I think they're going to take this thing all the way down. They can't take the penalty, though. They can call timeout. If they take the penalty, they're punting it. If they, they call, call timeout, timeout, then they have the decision. But it's going to get down to about 40 seconds before they have to take the timeout. Fourth and six. And... If they run it, I don't think I think you're going to see NFA with maybe 25 seconds left in the game. Yeah, and that means they cannot. So timeout called with 32 seconds remaining. Now they're sending the kicker out onto the field. They're sending the punt team out, and what they're telling them right now is quick kick, kick it away, get it Open off. Open corner. Just get it off. Just the only Just thing. Get, it get off. rid of it. And because all what this does is also kills time. Yes. If he can put this on the turf, NFA's got to fall on. It. They can't even, I don't even know if they could risk a return. NFA's been very, very suspect in the return game on the punting end as well. So, Bronson stands back at his 41-yard line. Shane McMahon would be chomping at the bit to get out there and make a couple more throws, though. Snap is good. Gets the kickoff, a high spiral. They got to let this thing go. They do, and it bounces into the end zone, which they get a break, does the NFA. They'll have the ball at their own 20 with 24 seconds remaining, and they need a touchdown, which means nothing but first downs. You can't throw anything that isn't a first down. You gotta let the chains and move. no timeouts. And you gotta go. You gotta go. That's well, the best way to put it. If I told you before the game, if I said, hey, Coach Bakulis, you can have the ball down six with a, with, you know, last drive of the game, he would have taken it, I'm sure. I'd like to have a minute 24 left. I'm sure he would. McManaway in the shotgun. The Cheshire faithful sensing the end of the game. McManaway has time. Now he's pressured. Rolls right. Heaves it down the sideline, and it's out of bounds. He threw it away. He received heavy pressure. But the biggest problem with that is it took up a lot of time. Yeah, it took up 12 seconds. Second down, 16.1 seconds remaining. 16 seconds left. They have a hook and ladder in the playbook? I'm sure they do. The old hook and lateral along with... The swinging fence and the dipsy do. Swing buckaroo. gate, yeah. The rodeo. The picket fence, the swinging gate, the, the you go to the bottle cap and go over to the used Chevy. Okay. Okay, sports doctor, you're the bottle cap. Mikey, you're the twig. <laughs> Mikey, you run to the Chevy and you go left. McManaway, gonna throw over the middle. Hits Briggs. Briggs will have a first down at the 40 yard line. Clock spike stops it. with 8.3 seconds. They're gonna have to spike it. 8.3, everybody's on. Clock runs, spikes it with, wow, that's a lot of clock that runs off on a spike. Oh, that's a heavy hand up there. No, no, hometown, no hometown help on the clock tonight. 6.8 seconds remaining, NFA has time for, I think this has gotta be, gotta be considered the last play, no? 
Yeah, when well, you heard of the Music City Miracle, they need the Rose City Miracle right now. Orchestrated by number nine, Shane McManaway. The Miracle at the Academy is all that's left. Briggs hustling to the left side of the formation. He's there. McManaway under center. Maybe the last play of the game. Safety's 25 yards deep. Deep down the sideline, McManaway throws for Pomeroy. It's incomplete, and that will do it. The clock runs out. The officials. Coach Bakula says he wants one more second. That was a heavy-handed clock I, that time. I, I have to agree. I think that was, uh, once the ball hits the turf, it's incomplete, and it whistle blows. So we'll see if NFA has one more play in the bag. I think they do, and Cheshire knows it, and they have one, two, three, four uh, of their biggest, tallest, most athletic guys back in supreme prevent. They have their hands team in the defensive secondary. Two seconds, Casey. Two seconds on the clock. McManaway stands at his own 30-yard line. McManaway drops. Plenty of time. Now he rolls. Steps up. A lot of pressure. Steps up again. Throws. Finds his man, Mulkentine. Mulkentine will be ridden out of bounds. And there's your ball game. The Cheshire High School Rams will move to 2-0 with a 35-29 victory over a game NFA Wildcat team. But it will be a happy ride home for the Rams faithful. Yeah, big time ball game here tonight, Casey. And I, I think it's safe to say that, you know, Coach Jason McCool is, is very proud of his kids tonight. But it's not about competing right now. It's about winning the ball game. Cheshire faithful in front of us. Good job, guys. Traveled very well. Um, great things from both sides of the game, uh, both teams. And a game with two teams that are very, very close in competition. The mistakes killed NFA tonight. As always, you can see the full highlights of this game on Tuesday, Wired Zone, as well as the full game uh, coverage shortly thereafter. For Family First Life, we want to say thank you, Sports Doc. I'll see you, I'll, yeah, I'll see you in two weeks. Uh, you'll, I'll be back in two weeks. Join us next week as the Sports Doctor and Mike Emery brings you Montville and Fitch. Sports Doctor, we're going to head down to the field. Thank you all for listening. You've been listening to Game Day Live on theday.com. <laughs>